I'm live. It's working. Okay. You can comment about your ridiculous microphone. Yeah, I do have a ridiculous microphone. Um, where do you see if people are coming in or not? Oh, there's one person. That's us. Oh. Will you give me a little mic test? Yeah. Hi, I'm Alicia Reisinger, and this is Wax Buffalo. We're a pure soy candle company here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I'm in my kitchen. This is where it all actually started. Except it wasn't as bright and white as this. Oh, there's someone on. Okay. Hi, I am Alicia Reisinger. This is Wax Buffalo. Wax Buffalo is a pure soy candle company in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we make modern candles um, with really kind of classic minimalistic jars. Um, and so today I'm going to pour some candles for you. Thanks for stopping by. We're very excited to be hanging out with Renegade. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our company. I'm going to start kind of getting some soy wax ready here. So we use uh, American made pure soy wax so we're a pure soy wax company and they're very pretty. The flakes are just like kind of like dreamy and flaky. And if you're going to make a nine ounce candle, which is what we're going to make today, you need three cups of soy wax flakes. So I'm gonna start those melting now in my little teeny like portable melter pot, which is, I'm, I'm obsessed with. When I first was making uh, soy candles, so I started the entire business in my kitchen, this kitchen, except it was uh, not remodeled then. I actually destroyed this kitchen and we had to remodel it. <laughs> <laughs> when we finally moved out of here. So um, this is where I would make all my candles. And I would actually just like, you can see my little stove back there. I would um, put lots and lots of gigantic pots of boiling water. My husband does all the cooking in our family and he has all these like this really nice kitchenware and I destroyed it all. Um, soy wax is pretty forgiving. Like if you're making soy candles in, in your home and you're just making like a couple of them, um, easy peasy. You can clean it up. You can clean it out of the pots like, super easily, but if you're making like hundreds of them every night, definitely starts to kind of like wear on your equipment. And that's what I did. So that's what I got him for Christmas a couple of years ago was some new pots and pans and a new kitchen. <laughs> um, so we're going to let the soy wax flakes melt a little bit. Um, and then we'll add some oil. We at Wax Buffalo use essential oil blends, and then we also use phthalate free fragrance oils that um, are high end. I, uh, I struggle with headaches. I get really bad migraines. And um, so all of our oils are phthalate free because it's just something that triggers migraines with me and it actually triggers it in a lot of people. And so that's just something that we've ad adhered to as a company. And then we also love to add essential oils. So I actually brought a bunch today to the kitchen so we can play around a little bit um, and make some fun candles. So we do have a fun code going on over at our uh, website. If you click through, um, we're doing 15% off the entire site. And then we also have DIY pouring kits on the site right now, which are really fun. And we have them in four of our top fragrances, our, our top sellers, Armitage Street, Blood Orange, Sweet Tobacco, and Red Fern. All of our fragrances are based on stories from our past. Um, and so I can always, I can tell you a little bit about each story as we get into this. Um, especially since we're two minutes in and we're doing this for two hours and I'm like, well, I think that's all my material folks. So <laughs> maybe I'll just start telling you stories. Um, so when I first started making candles, um, I had just had, first of all, I started when I was in high school, my grandma and I used to go to this place called the Haymarket in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we would wander the Haymarket and there were all these really cute little stores that had, um, tons of little like candle shops, like back when, you know, like it was like millions of votives in different colors. And it was like, this one smells like the seashore and this one smells like applesauce. And we would spend hours in there and they also had little tea rooms. And so I was always allowed to like pick out some candles and then we'd go to tea and slowly we got to know the people that were making candles. And I started to learn how to make candles. I bought my first candle making kit um, and I would make them in the kitchen at home and I would give them to all my friends, my poor friends, like at 14, who wants like a 
homemade candle, but that's what everybody got all the time. And a lot of times I would put glitter on them. So that was kind of my um, first experience with making candles. And back then I made them out of paraffin and glitter and tons of dye. Um, when my daughter was born, she was born with a cleft lip and palate. And so um, I started like really researching a lot of the toxins that were in our home. Um, to be truly transparent, uh, having a daughter that uh, had a birth defect, I took it like really personally and was just like sure that it was something that I had done. And so I like cleaned up everything. Now I know it's just, it was part of our, our ancestry. It's in our DNA. Um, and so, but you know, like when it first happens, you're very scared. And so I did start cleaning up my house and it actually was the impetus to make sure that like, there aren't a lot of toxins in our home. And we started using different kinds of dish soap and different kinds of cleaners. And one of the things I started to read about were candles and how toxic candles can be, especially if they have paraffin in it. Paraffin is a derivative of petroleum. So it's, you're literally burning like crude oil in your home. Oh, I have to check. This is Lauren and she's going to tell me if I'm working. Okay, I think I'm actually on, so that's good. I wasn't sure if the link was going to work. Um, anyway, so I started making soy candles after Navy was born for all of my friends and just like passing them out. And um, one of the things that I really, when I was buying soy candles, like from Target and stuff, I just didn't think they had super strong scents. Um, ooh, our wax, is, our wax is melting. That's what's happening right now. It's getting nice and warm. I'll show you the little, can you see? Oh, it's kind of low. There you go. Um, and this little thing spins it for you too, which is really cool. So it helps it melt really fast. If you're doing it on your home stovetop, you just want to take your little stirrer at this point and you'd like stir, 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 and it kind of helps your wax move through. Um, but this little machine does it for me, which is very cool. And that's what those little beeps are that you're hearing in my gigantic microphone. This is a microphone that my husband set up for me because he knows these things. Anyway, um, so I started making candles for my friends and I was like really playing around with just how to make soy candles that smell strongly. So I, I goofed around a lot with that, just like the um, way I would add in oils at the time I would add in oils, like what temperature the wax was, that kind of thing, what kind of oils I was using. I still wanted them to be clean of phthalates or any of those chemicals. There's some chemicals that um, and phthalates are one of them that you can put in fragrances and that's what like ups the fragrance level and that's what makes them smell stronger. But that's also what makes your tummy hurt a little bit sometimes. So um, we were doing that and like kind of adding it in and I was making for friends and then somebody asked me to sell them in a store and we started doing that and um, it just kind of grew from there. And now we're in 80 stores across the U.S. Um, you can also find us in all the Whole Foods in the Midwest, which is kind of rad because right now they're open, um, which is crazy crazy, but because we're in grocery stores, you can still buy us out of Whole Foods and that's very exciting. Um, okay. Our wax is completely melted. And so when your wax is melted, it goes from this state of being really pretty kind of white flaky, flaky flakes. Um, you can see here, they're just like, it's like really fresh and pretty looking into kind of like a golden colored I'm trying to show you, but like, it'll be completely melted. It almost looks like a honey color or like an olive oil. And that's where you want to be. So that's this little sucker is going to get you to about 170 degrees. And that's where you want your wax to be when you put your oil in. That isn't the temperature that you want it to be, though, when you pour it. So to start, um, we're going to pick what fragrance we want. And I'm just going to work with some essential oils today because I thought that would be fun. Um, Navy, my daughter, who is eight years old, is super into this blend that we've been doing at the house that is grapefruit. So I brought some grapefruit. I have all my essential oils are actually from Whole Foods because I thought it was a nice nod to say thank you to Whole Foods for carrying our candles. And plus they're just like pretty, I find that they're pretty strong when we make them in our candles, but they're also affordable and I like the ingredients in them. So we've been doing a grapefruit, lemon, bergamot, and sweet orange, which sweet orange is dreamy. Um, and if you know anything about these, bergamot's like super uplifting, lemon is very renewing, um, orange is like kind of uh, vibrant and gives you energy, it's super energizing. And then we have been adding a little bit of lemongrass. I don't wanna do too much lemongrass because it can be overpowering, but it's very inspiring. That's kind of what that scent brings to people. And so she's been calling it the, um, she calls it the uh, Fruit Loop Cake Candle. I call it the unicorn candle, but it just smells like happiness, pure happiness. And it's really good, like in a kitchen, you know, or a bright kitchen or in a bathroom or definitely like the candle you want to burn when you first wake up. I got my tea. Um, okay. So we're going to add that. And one of the things that is a little bit different when you're working with essential oils, 
when you're working with a fragrance oil, they're always just a little bit stronger. Um, so you can get away with using a little bit of less to get a stronger candle. But with an essential oil blend, they are there's a little bit more mild, especially in soy wax. Um, anytime you put something in soy wax, including like color, um, soy wax is just going to dilute it a little bit. So that's why if you've ever tried to color a soy wax candle, it looks very pastel. Um, you can still do it. Uh, you just aren't going to get like a vibrant red or a super dark black without adding some sort of chemical component to get it that way. Um, so we're going to put in these five oils. Do you want to come say hi? Maybe I'm doing your candle. Here's a few of my children's. This is Satchel Wyatt. Hi. And this is Navy. Hi. Navy, I'm doing your blend, the candle that you love with all the orange and bergamot. So I have four children. These are my two oldest. Navy is eight. Yep. And Satchel is um seven. Yeah. Yeah. And they're very good helpers in the kitchen. I have two more. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old that are both upstairs asleep right now, snoozing. Do you have anything you want to say about how cool candles are? Um and I, I'd like to say that mom's candles are cool because um, oh, um, when she gets candles, she always brings back the jars that she doesn't use. Yes, and then we get to make candles here, right? Do you want to talk about the one time you had a pop-up at our store? Oh, yeah, when I did all the necklaces. When yeah, one time Navy was a baker and she made these really beautiful necklaces and sold them in our store and raised money for an orphanage in Thailand, right? Should I go get one? You I can go get one. Come on. Yeah. Um, can and I Satchi, you want to talk about your movie you've been making? Uh, like the what movie? You've been making some cool movies while we've been on break, right? Oh, um, we made it. So you can check out our news movies. <laughs> and also you can check out our movie movies. Like we got an aerial one. A Guardians of the Galaxy one, but it has no bad words, nothing really scary. It, we kind of made it like so. It's a kid friendly Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And also, we made The Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah. They're fabulous. But the next one oh, yeah, we're going to make is going to be um, Star Wars. Oh, that's going to be so fun. Yeah, we are going to make Star Wars next. We've been making movies. That's this right. is a Star Wars Lego. Wait, you're showing your necklace. Okay. Um, and then you guys are going to go up and eat some dinner, right? Well, I make more candles. So, um, I've been working on personalized necklaces as a gift for some of my friends. And this is one. I like how you name tag them. Yeah, that's They're cute. very cute. Oh, yeah. Thanks for showing us this, you guys. Okay, Bye. I'll let you know how the candle turns out. Okay. Have fun with Dad. Okay. See ya. Bye. <laughs> um, okay, back to our candle making. So, we've got our wax set at right around 170. It's probably cool just a little bit because we had that little chat. Um, we're going to put in five, two, three, four, five, sweet orange. I'm going to do two lemon. I'm going to do five bergamot. I feel like bergamot is a little bit milder of, uh, oil. So four, five, and I want the sweet orange to come out a little bit too. Uh, I like the lemon because it gives it a little bit of punch, but I don't want it to be like a lemon candle. And the same with grapefruit can be a little bit overbearing. So we're going to do two lemon, two grapefruit, and then two lemongrass. I'm going to let it swirl and we're going to see what we think and we might add more. So that's like a little over 15 drops. I like to be at least at 20. So I'll probably add a little bit more with essential oils. I do think like, uh, you just have to go a little bit more if you want a stronger candle. If you want like a more mild candle, if it's like going to be like your bathroom candle or your yoga candle that you're like breathing in and meditating to, then I think having a milder candle is lovely. And honestly, some of my favorite ones are like Copal and Lavender and just kind of like a nice calm scent for those kind of candles. Um, but since I want this to be bright and kitcheny, I might make it a little bit richer. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stir these in. And when we stir in our oils, um, you just want to make sure that you're stirring pretty slowly. If you stir too fast, you end up putting air in your candle and that's what will give you those pockets or bubbles or like sometimes when your candle falls or you have like those little um, like almost tunneling that happen to your candle. Um, it just, it's probably, it was like an air pocket that as it was cooling, it just went poof. So if you stir slowly, a lot of times you can fix those. Um, and then you just want to make sure that your oils get emulsified well. So I always have a standard of we stir at least 40 times. Uh, I mean, you can definitely stir more than that. It somehow becomes very therapeutic, I feel like, to stir and stir and stir and stir. Um, a lot of times I feel like we at Wax Buffalo will be back in the pouring studio and we'll all just have like stir sticks and pots and we'll be stirring and chatting with each other. 
<laughs> it's like you slowly gravitate towards a pot with oil and you're just like stirring and chatting and drinking your coffee. And it's very therapeutic. Um, this smells amazing. It's heavy on the burger mop for sure. So I might add a little bit more sweet orange. Because I'd like it to be a little sweeter and orangey. Yeah, see, this little machine will stir for you. That's what that sound was. Um, which is kind of cool. But I'm going to turn it off and do it myself. We actually sell these at Wax Buffalo now. Um, this would be for one candle. And whether you like it or not, whether than having to like do it, you know, like back in our studio, what we melt our wax in is like a vat that's this big. Um, and we can put 50 pounds of wax in at once. But it's a little bit hard to pour one candle or do like little testers with different oils and different combinations. And so this has been really fun for us. And then we just started doing this series called distance. So we're, I think we have five episodes up and I chat every Sunday with a maker across America that's doing something neat during our time of being distant from each other. And so um, that's been super fun too. And then I just make them a candle while we're chatting online. Um, I feel like it's very selfish because I get to talk to very cool people and hear about the cool things they're doing, um, the money they're raising, the awareness they're raising, how they're staying sane, being at home, how they're being careful, like within their own companies, those kind of things. Um, and then we talk about the oils and scents that they love and we make a candle and then I send them that candle and then you can buy it on Sunday nights from us. And it's been really fun and collaborative and beautiful and I don't know about you guys, but it helps me feel like connected when uh, I can't just like go out and hug people right now. Uh, Zoom is nice for that. And YouTube Live. Except that I cannot see your lovely faces, so I feel like I'm just chatting with myself. So, okay. Now that we've stirred this at least 40 times, um, we're going to let it sit just a little bit. And that is one of our tricks at Wax Bus Buffalo is I like to let it cool a little bit before I pour. There's a lot of different theories and you can definitely hit the Googles for how to make the best candles for us and the type of wax that we use, the type of oils that we use in the specific vessel that we're working with. In the five years, we've kind of just learned this routine of what your wax should feel like and look like before you pour it into your candle so that you don't have to do a ton of topping or cleaning. So um, a lot of times you can use like a heat gun to clean the top to make it pretty, um, but it definitely saves us time if we don't have to do that. And so we've kind of come up with a way to not have to do that and just pour a really beautiful candle the first time. Not always, we still mess up, but this is kind of our trick. Um, so maybe I'll keep going with a little story then of uh, how we started to grow. So we definitely, like I was telling you, we're making candles. I was making candles for friends and family. Um, I started a little website. I started a little Instagram. I was actually so nervous about starting my own company and like people thinking I was a nerd ball for making candles. And I don't know. I don't know what is scary about being an entrepreneur, but it is scary. It's scary to put yourself out there. It's scary, I think, to make something and ask people if they like it. And then not only if they like it, but if they'll actually spend money on it, like that's scary. And so um, I remember distinctly deciding not to start, like not to talk about Wax Buffalo very much on my own personal page and to start my own Instagram for Wax Buffalo and like tentatively putting out like, hey, I'm making candles, everyone. And um, I even like, you know, was taking my own photos and I still take some, but we also use some really great photographers now. But like, I can remember I made like this campfire candle and I made a cinnamon and clove candle. And then I went out in the back and just did like the most elaborate, like I think I spent two hours working on like the photo that I was going to post on my Instagram. And I went out to like our fire pit and then I put a stump in the fire and then I found old rosemary sprigs and I had like all the jars and I had wax flakes spread, you know, like I was like looking through magazines, like how do you do a pretty flat lay? And I was Googling how to do flat, flat lays with my like piece of junk phone. Cause this was five years ago. And so like, um, I was looking back on some of the, the posts in my Instagram and I know that it probably would be smart to curate it and get rid of some of those old things that don't really like necessarily align with our brand anymore, but I just can't because it's a history. And those old crappy pictures tell a story of like how I evolved even, you know, figuring out how to like run an Instagram and like what worked and what didn't. And um, anyway, I, I remember being just like crazy proud of that picture with like the stump and the fire and oh my gosh like goes like everyone's gonna love this and they're gonna get what I'm doing <laughs> um, but you know what honestly the cool thing is is that our community here in Lincoln Nebraska we're super lucky is super super supportive of makers and so 
Um, I did my first maker's market and I made a hundred candles. And I remember it took me over a week to make a hundred candles. I was pretty new at like making a lot of candles and I wanted different scents and I was trying different vessels and you have to test out different wicks when you're trying different wet vessels. And uh, I even remember talking to my friends and being like, I only have 89 candles. I wish that I could just make 11 more so that I could be an even 100. So I go to this maker market and it's at Christmas time and we sold out of all 100 candles in the first hour and a half of the market. In fact, the last part of the market was just me like handing out cards and being like, I'm so sorry, but I'll make you some and I'll figure out a way to ship them to you. And that's how I actually created our online <laughs> store as I Googled how to make a website. I The first one we did was through Square. Um, and so I created my own website and it's very easy through Square. They kind of help you step-by-step step, just plug and play. You plug in your pictures. It already has like the e-commerce part that you need. And so I did all of that. Um, and then I sold a few candles for Christmas and I was like, well, I guess I have a candle company now. And so, um, yeah, that was a little bit of how we got started. Uh, we are getting to a place where this is feeling really good. I like to pour it around 130. Um, a lot, of, you can use a thermometer. You can use like a candy thermometer if you're at home doing this. Um, but you can also just, if you don't want to like mess up your candy thermometer, I've always actually been one that just kind of touches it when it starts to feel like it is the same temperature as your body. So 130 is a little hotter than that. But um, if you've ever made bread, like the sourdough bread trend that's happening right now, you know, when you add the water to the bread and you want it to be your body temperature. So you put your hand under the water and you let the water run over your fingers until you're like, oh, I'm not feeling it really anymore. Um, that's kind of what is the best, uh, I, I think, temperature to pour a candle where you're going to get that super clean pour. You really can't mess it up. I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is that it's going to tunnel in. And then all you have to do is take a hair dryer and clean up the top. So don't feel pressure, but these are just, you know, techniques that we've kind of learned. I'm wicking the candle now. Um, we use a paper core wick for our candles. Um, I like the way that it burns and it's pretty consistent. Um, and obviously it's clean burning, so you don't have to worry about, honestly, nobody really makes wicks with lead in them anymore. Uh, I think it, I think they did away with it. I think I read like in 2003 or something like that, it became completely illegal in the United States to make a wick with lead in it. Um, don't quote me on that date. I'll Google it here, but, uh, I know that it's been a, it's been a quite a few years since people have had lead wicks. That said, I feel like if you buy a candle from a thrift store and it looks like it's from the 1960s, maybe don't burn it. Just, you know, set it aside, make it like a pretty shelf candle. Okay. All right. So we're going to do our pour. So like I said, if you just touch the side and it doesn't feel too hot to touch, that's a really good pour temperature. Um, and even if you're pouring it a little bit warm, it's still going to set up really nicely for you. Um, and it'll still burn really nicely. So again, no pressure. This smells super good. It smells super orangey, but then I feel like it has depth with the lemon and the grapefruit and the bergamot and that little bit of lemongrass. I always like adding just a little bit of lemongrass besides just lemon, because I think it gives it a little bit I don't know, it feels like springy or a little bit more fresh. Almost make it feel like you're standing in a grove. Okay, and we're gonna pour. So this is our vessel. We, uh, we're kind of known for our X. This is our classic vessel. It has this cute little booty stamp that talks about our company. Um, we, uh, we, this is what we sell the most of. And so we have a full classic line of these. And then we also do seasonal scents. So we have a summer line that's coming out next month. We're just finishing up our spring line and our spring line is beautiful. We have an avocado candle. We have one that's called willow tree. That's really lilac -y and beautiful. Uh, we have one called hummingbird that is like pretty bergamot and orange and lemon heavy. It's, it's, springy and beautiful and happy. It made me feel very happy. Like a hummingbird makes you feel happy. And then, um, my favorite lavender. We did our very first, we have not done a lavender candle in our line ever. And so this was our first year that we decided to go ahead and embrace it. And it's been a really good seller for us. And I love it. It's become kind of my morning candle. So that's our spring line. Those are also on the website. And again, those are the whole website is 15% off today for a renegade. Um, so you'll see there's a banner when you come into the website that talks about our percentage off. Um, we're using the code shop small Nebraska. Um, so when you come in, you'll see it, just use that code. You get 15% off. Um, we have a lot of really fun things on the site right now. We have our do DIY kits. So they come with two jars, two wicks, all the oil you need, all the wax you need, all of that kind of fun stuff. And then we just, to keep the price low, 
Um, we kind of just talk you through what you can use in your kitchen to pour candles. And that's how I started. And I'd rather you be able to do that than have to charge you for a bunch of equipment um, that you don't need quite yet, like this stuff. That said, we also have the equipment on the website if you're like, I'm ready. I'm diving in. I want the good stuff. You can also purchase that online too. And of course, everything is 15% off right now. <laughs> okay, shall we do it? Let's pour. Here we go. Here is our beautiful, what did Navy call this? The Fruit Loop Cake. Fruit Loop Cake Candle. And perfect. For a nine ounce candle, you really just need three cups of soy wax. If you're gonna do two, use six cups and so on and so forth. And then we use these little silvery um, wick holders. Uh, they're just super easy. You kind of shove the wick into this little pocket right here. But you can also use um, like a clothespin, if you have a clothespin at home, anything that can be, will basically just hold your wick in the middle. Uh, I used to use pencils. I used to stick two pencils on either side when I was first starting. Uh, when I first started my company, um, my goal was to invest no more than $100 and not spend our family's money. We've, like I told you, my daughter had a cleft lip and palate, so we had a crazy amount of medical bills. Um, both my husband and I were in production. We were working in documentary work and the documentary we had lost funding. And so we stopped having work right when she was born. So we had just bought a house. We stopped having work. We had a child with a ton of medical bills and I was like, I'm going to start a new business, but to do it, like, obviously like I couldn't spend money on it. So I spent $100. So everything I used was in our kitchen. That's why I destroyed John's kitchen and all of his pots and pans. And then I never bought anything fancy like this super fancy wick holder. <laughs> I literally used all the pencils in our house. And so I would put together two pencils on the top of a candle. Um, and then I would just make my rope. And then to do it in my kitchen, um, and this is another trick that you might like, uh, your your kitchen counter, like what you make your candles on will determine how the candle um, solidifies and um, cools. And different, like different types of surfaces will pull differently. So for instance, this is, uh, what is this? Uh, it's not granite, but it's a, uh, well, it's like granite. I can't think of all of what our countertop is because I'm nervous and on a YouTube channel, but uh, it will pull faster because it's cold because the counter is cold. Um, a lot of times if you have just like a laminate, uh, it's actually a warmer surface. But if you're starting to have trouble at home with your candles tunneling in the middle, it means they're probably pulling faster in the middle because of that coolness that they're sitting on. There's a couple tricks that you could do. You can um, cut up a box and stack a couple pieces of cardboard just to, to make sure that that surface is no longer cold. And so then it will solidify in like a very even way. You can also use old towels. I used to put um, like our old beach towels on our counter. And then that's what I would do. And it was, it was a much warmer surface. You'll also want to keep your house a little bit warmer. So if you're making candles on a cold day, just make sure that you're in kind of a warmer environment, like your kitchen. Um, and then if you're having that trouble, try the towel or try the cardboard. Um, wood is really great. Uh, if you're working like at a work table that's made of wood, that's like, um, you'll, it'll definitely get messy and wood is harder to clean, but, um, it does work really well for cooling your candles and giving you really consistent, uh, we call it like the creamy, the dreamy creamy <laughs> pores where it's just consistently beautiful and shiny on top because they cool so evenly. Um, so yeah. Okay. I think we should make another one. Uh, I'm going to set this in front here to cool. And I'm going to drink a little water. I'm reading the comments to make sure there's no questions. Oh, it's just people saying nice things. That's super nice. Okay. Awesome. All right. Shall we do this again? Are we ready for another candle? I should introduce myself again. They said that on Renegade. Keep introducing yourself. Well, hi, I'm Alicia, Alicia Reisinger, and I own Wax Buffalo Candle Company in Lincoln, Nebraska, here in the Midwest. We're a pure soy candle company. Um, we pride ourselves on being minimalistic and modern. This is what our vessel looks like. And all of our scents are curated from stories or adventures um, from my past. But now as we've grown, they're starting to become adventures and stories that we've collected from people that we love or that work together with us. Um, we're a modern 
uh, kind of apothecary style company, but we also um, really pride ourselves on the fact that we're a company filled with women that enjoy working differently, um, which just means like we don't necessarily adhere to the nine to five. A lot of our brains work at different times of the day. Um, we have families, we have adventures. Some of this is just like, a, you know, it started as a side hustle for me. It's still a side hustle for some of our team members. And so we really embrace working differently and encouraging each other to come in and be a part of the company when it works best for each of our personalities. And so that means sometimes um, our team members are coming in at five in the morning with, that's not me, but with a big cup of coffee and just pouring for the morning until their kids wake up. I'm more of a night owl. So I tend to pour at night with a whiskey in hand. That's how I started the company. Um, but then we also have people just come in for a day. We have people that are there all week. It's, we just, we try to work very alternatively and we try to really um, press into the things that are the most important to us and which just like keeps our environment kind of beautiful. I think sometimes we move a little bit slower as a company because of it, but I honestly think it's beautiful. I was listening to this. Hold on. I thought I saw a question. Get my face all up in here. Oh, hi. <laughs> Yay. Hi, Casey Swing. Um, so I think that we grow a little slower because of it. But then I was listening to this podcast um, by with Guy Raz. I'm sure most so many of us makers listen to that, that how I built it. And he mentioned something to a maker that was talking about like you can scale. So you can scale your company, right? And you can, if your 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 goal is to scale your company and sell it or get investors, like that is definitely like one trajectory. Um, but then he called it a lifestyle brand. Like this is just a lifestyle brand. And then he went on to further explain like a lifestyle brand is basically a brand that allows you to live the lifestyle that you want while still pay paying yourself a small salary. So instead of me having to go get a job and like beg them to let me work the way that I want, this is a company that has created the ability for me to have a lifestyle where I can work around my kids. I can bring my kids to work. I don't go in if they're sick and I don't have to call anybody to do it. And so I honestly tried to create that experience for everybody that works with us too. Um, and that's what I mean by working differently. And so I do think like Wax Buffalo probably will always be more of a lifestyle brand. I don't see us like growing it and scaling it in a crazy way. That said, we are in um, 80 darling boutiques across the U.S. We're also in the Midwest region of Whole Foods, which is very exciting. Um, and that's exciting just in a completely different way. We had to learn how to create UPC codes. Um, each store, you know, like a lot of the small boutiques, it's like working with family where you like, you send a box of candles and a little note and you're like, love you, thanks. Um, but when you work with a bigger store, they, the way that they intake is differently, the way that you have to box things up is differently, the way you have to document things is different. And that's been a really fun thing for us to learn. Um, so definitely like, we're very excited to be a part of their little fam. And we're hoping, uh, we were talking to them before COVID that we're gonna start doing some in-store demonstrations of candle making at Whole Foods. So for some of the staff and then hopefully like be on the floor and be like, let's make some candles together. So hopefully we can see some of you in real life. Um, I stopped counting because I was talking, but to make a nine ounce candle, we're going to want about three cups of pure soy wax flakes. And that's what we're making. That's what this is right here. Ooh, so dreamy. I think it's so pretty. Um, it's just American made um, pure soy wax. That's what we make our candles out of. And then we use, um, essential oil blends. We make some candles using some essential oils, but then we also use high quality fragrance oils that are phthalate free. And that's how we make our dreamy fragrances. Most of our fragrances are based on stories from our past or adventures. So for instance, one of our best selling candles is called Armitage Street. And um, when I first met my husband, I lived in Chicago. Uh, we both did. We went to school there. And then our, we got married there in this little park on Armitage Street. Um, so we got married in the park. Our reception was in a hookah bar. So we actually like we got married and then the entire wedding party walked six blocks down to this cute little coffee shop hookah bar. And that's where our reception was. <laughs> so Armitage is very special to me. Um, and so when I was, I made this candle that was like vanilla and blackberry. Um, it has some clove in it. It's super like creamy. Uh, there's a little honey, um, but it's subtle. It's like really subtle and beautiful. I actually wear it a lot. We have, we have rollers and I wear Armitage all the time. And I was like, this smells like Armitage street. Um, but when you think about like what Chicago smells like, it doesn't smell beautiful, like blackberry and clove, but we lived above Starbucks and Lush, like the Lush brand cosmetics. So we lived on that street and it's filled with all these really cool retail stores. And that's where we lived. <laughs> and so when I think of Armitage Street, it does smell like 
I mean, when you walk by a Lush store, you're just like, oh my gosh, that smells good. And then we had Starbucks wafting from the other way. And so I created this candle because I was like, this smells like happiness to me. This smells like I was like 20 and I would go downstairs and we would go get drink tequilas outside, outside of our apartment. And we would walk these streets and we would get coffees and all of our friends came over. And so like, I really think that scents can send you back to a place in such a beautiful way. And so that's kind of what I wanted to create with each of our scents. So that's a place where I go. And so I hope that Armitage Street takes you to that place, your Armitage Street, whatever that might be. Um, I have one that is called Red Fern and it smells, it's like oak mossy and weedy. It kind of smells like wet grass. Um, there's some amber in there. So there's like some sweet kind of romantic notes. It's got a little bit of vanilla um, and it's named after my grandma. Her name was Fern and she had fiery red hair. And so we named it Red Fern uh, just because that one was really like, to me, it kind of smelled like the Midwest. Like when you come into the Midwest and it just feels like warm and sweet, like on those, like as you're moving from like spring to summer and you walk outside and you're like, this just smells like, like life. That's what it smelled like in the Midwest, especially because my grandma was such a close special person to me. So I think like making a candle that smelled like the happiness that Midwest smelled like to me had to be called Redfern. So all of our candles are like that. I need, some of them have the stories on the website. I need to get a little bit better at doing that. They're all basically buried in my Instagram from like four or five years ago. So I need to curate it and tell those stories if, if they're worth it. Okay. So our little pot is stirring the soy wax for me. It's the cutest little system, it actually stirs it for you, which is lovely. At the studio, we actually have a gigantic vat um, where we make our candles. We have two of them, and they hold 50 pounds of wax, and that's where we get all of our our um, wax melted from. Those, It's pretty rad. They actually can melt like 50 pounds in about an hour, so it's pretty rad. So we do two of those going at all time, and then we have these big silver pitchers that we use so that we can pour much bigger batches than what I'm doing here in my kitchen. But this thing is pretty rad. We have this on the website, um, and it's it's really to kind of help you make sample candles or make candles at home. It stirs it for you. It heats it up to the temperature that you want it to be to make sure that you get a good pour. Um, usually that's right around 170 degrees when we're making them in the studio. You want a nice hot wax so that you can really emulsify those oils in and make sure it gets blended well and you don't have any like weird swirls or pockets that didn't get that fragrance in there um, effectively. So when we do it, we get all of the oils ready. Um, in these cute little beakers. Let's get a sugar beaker. So when you come to our studio, you can now make candles with us. Look at our cute beakers. And so we encourage people to blend their own oils and we kind of teach those oil blending techniques. Um, it's been really fun because we also have some of like our classic scents as base scents. And then we have people add to them that that's been really fun too. And there's been some really beautiful combinations that have been made that way. Um, so when you come to our studio, we help you get all of your wax ready, your oils ready. Um, and then I thought we would do it in the beaker today like we do in the studio. So I already put a little bit of oil in here. There's a little bit of coconut oil. We made a coconut um, candle for a friend of mine. It's the one coming up on Distance on Sunday. Distance is our YouTube show that we've been talking to different collaborators and creators across the U.S. and making them a candle and then just kind of uh, hearing what they're doing, you know, during this time of distance. And so it's a fast little show. It's like anywhere from eight to 20 minutes we have great conversations. We make a candle uh, together on Zoom, um, hear a lot about like what they're doing in their own community. And then you can buy that candle on our website every Sunday night, right at eight o'clock. We do a limited run. And then the proceeds of that candle go to the Lincoln Food Bank because uh, we're from Lincoln, Nebraska here um, just to help kiddos that are uh, out of school right now and depending upon the food bank for some yummy lunches. Okay, so we have coconut. I thought we would do kind of a beachy candle. It's raining here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, and I wish that I was at the beach. So I thought we could mix up something that smells very beachy. So we're gonna start with a base of coconut. Right now I'm letting our wax cool. Uh, again, it was, it was heated to 170 degrees. That's what we do here at Wax Buffalo in Lincoln, Nebraska. I keep repeating because they said to do that. So that's <laughs> what we do in our studio. We heat it to 170 degrees and then I like to let it cool a little bit before we add our oils. So we're going to take our time to curate the oils. So if we've got coconut, I thought we could do a little bit of tangerine. I wanted to kind of smell like, um, like that really yummy, like suntan oil lotion, uh, that I love putting on the babies. Um, I've got a little bit of, have you guys ever, um, smelled doTERRA cit citrus bliss? It's good. It has like, what is it? Let me see if it tells you what's in here. <laughs> it has, um, I'm laughing cause it's the baby, like the three-year-old 
was running to come say hi, which would be totally fine, except he wasn't wearing pants. <laughs> so I'll introduce him to you a little later when he has some pants on. Um, okay, so this one, I'm cheating a little bit because I just love this one so much. It has citrus, it has grapefruit, there's vanilla, tangerine, clementine, uh, vanilla bean extract. So I'm going to add some of this because um, when we diffuse this at the house, I do feel like it smells like kind of like that beachy suntan, but I'm adding that coconut in. And then I thought I would put a little bit of um, just like a couple drops of banana. I know weird, right? But where is that? Oh, uh, I think the banana will make it just smell like, I don't know, summery and beachy and coconutty. Let me know in the comments if you want me to like try something weird or if you have an idea. Uh, I'm all ears. I love fun, crazy combinations. Let me just see. Grandmas are the best. I would love to hear more about Fern. Oh, thank you. She is the best. I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more about Fern. Um, Fernie was feisty and ahead of her time. Um, she was this little tiny woman. She was like four foot, eight inches um, and pure feist. And then she lived here in Lincoln, Nebraska. She didn't get married till she was 30. She had her first kid when she was 31, which was really like different in the 1950s. Um, she was an incredible writer. And she also... Uh, was like grammar queen. She worked as a receptionist most of her life, but then also did a ton of like book editing for her companies. People in her company would write books and she would edit their books. So I always set all of my papers to grandma. And I would come every summer and spend a week or two weeks just with grandma by myself. She did these adventures with all the grandkids and each of us got a week with her. And so we just got to know her very, very well. Um, and she just was super dear to me. And then, um, as I got older, I like, I brought every boyfriend back to grandma and they'd have to spend time with her. And if she liked him, good. But if she didn't, it usually did not last much longer. <laughs> um, and then of course, grandma Fern is the one that introduced me to candles in the Haymarket. We would go to the Haymarket and we would, um, go through all the dreamy candle shops that had all the different colors. And, um, we would look at them and smell them. And she was so patient. The coolest thing about my grandma, and I think about this a lot when I'm raising my children, is that she always looked me in the eyes and she listened fully to what I was saying, even though I'm sure I was very bored. I mean, I have four children now and now I know how kids talk and like that had to have been such strength alone to just be like, I'm here and I want to hear your whole story. Um, and then I also like, she was a grandma. So she had the ability different than like a mother, like any of us that are like, I'm going to target, I'm getting my things. We're leaving guys. Like her whole goal for our week that we were with her was to just talk to us and tuck into us. And so she would, we'd go into a store and we could spend hours in a candle store and she didn't care. It would take me like 30, 40 minutes to pick out the pack of stickers I wanted to buy with my money. And she would just be there for it. And she'd sit down. She'd help me sort them out. And she was just like such a good listener. And I think it built in me a ton of confidence that like there's someone that cares about me and wants to listen. And of course, my parents are that way too. But a grandma just can do it differently. They have a different like agenda. They have different time elements. They're not, you know, raising children at that time. Grandparents are very special. And Fern was very special. We actually um, named the candle Red Fern after her because it's just beautiful. And it's one of our best sellers. And after and even after I was like, of course it is. Of course, everybody loves the grandma candle because everybody loved grandma Fern. Oh, and she was sarcastic and funny. And she remembered every story about all of us. And she always remembered all of our favorite things. And we would always get all those things in our stockings, but they were weird things. Like I would get a jar of olives. My cousin, Jamie always got me under oranges. <laughs> and like, if you said you liked something once, everybody was like, okay, that's going to be in your stocking next time. Cause she'll remember. And it was great. Um, yes, this is a nine ounce candle. That is correct. Thank you for asking that. And oh my gosh, you guys are just all being so nice. I was seeing if you were asking questions, how much are you? Oh, how much oil am I putting in? Okay. Great question. So because the coconut oil was a fragrance oil, um, I don't have to put quite as much essential oil, but now I'll have to make sure that I blended it correctly so that you're not just smelling the coconut, especially because I want it to smell like suntan lotion, but I don't necessarily want it to smell like a, um, what's the coconut drink? Uh, not a daiquiri, but a pina colada. So I don't want it to be that kind of like pina colada y, but I, I think we're getting there. I think I should probably add in maybe just like a little bit more of the banana. 
Um, so a fragrance oil is going to have a stronger throw for sure because it is a synthetic oil. And sometimes people are a little bit scared of fragrance oils. Um, I We've done a lot of research and, and worked with some really good companies that make some high-end fragrance oils that are beautiful. And there are some scents in the modern world that we want to smell that you're not going to be able to create with essential oils. So if you find the right fragrance oils and you make sure that they're made with good ingredients, that they're they late free, do your research, check out like the Prop 35 stuff and make sure that they're adhering by those rules, that's huge. Um, and for me, I deal with like really bad migraines. And so I can... I honestly, like there have been times that like we've accidentally sourced an oil from a new company and been like trying out a candle and I walk into the room and I'm like, oh, I, I'm getting a headache. There's something in it and we'll go back and look. And so it took us a long time to figure out who we wanted to source from, who we could trust, um, who you could afford, you know, as you're scaling your company. Um, it's one thing to be like, we make everything with the most purest, but like you can't charge people $58 for, you know, a daily candle. And so we wanted to be like really cognizant of making sure that um, our oils were like sustain like sustainable, that they were sourced responsibly, but that they were also affordable, so that we can make candles that we can sell at a price where you can burn seven a day if you want. That's not true, but at least a couple a day. Um, and then I put essential oils in for this one just because I really love mixing essential oils with fragrance oils because I always think it kind of changes everything a little bit. Um, with essential oils, a lot of times just to make a nine ounce candle, you need to put almost 20 drops of essential oils in there to get a stronger candle if you're going for a stronger candle. And then it depends on what oils you're using as to whether that's going to be a strong enough candle for you. So a lot of times you can, uh, you know, kind of do some blends and make some really custom beautiful things by using both. And that's what we do a lot in our company. So you want to mix your wax at least 40 stirs. Um, you can also set a timer and just mix for a minute. It's pretty therapeutic and um, you, know, you can put on your podcast and just start stirring. I was talking about it early, like in the studio, a lot of us like stand in front of these pots, like subconsciously and just stir them while we talk about our day. Um, but the biggest thing is that you really want to just emulsify that oil into the wax, right? And so you want to make sure it's really adhered to the wax and you're not getting weird swirls or you're not getting any pockets that didn't get perfectly blended. And that stirring helps. Now, um, you don't want to stir too fast because that's where you'll get those air pockets. Um, you'll create, it's like, it's like whipping a meringue, right? It's like creating that air and it's creating like that beautiful meringue. Well, you don't want that in your candle. Um, a lot of times if you're making candles at home and you're seeing like a sinkhole or they are like, they're falling in on each other. Or like sometimes you can get these little like bubble pockets that, that could be your problem. It could be that you are just stirring too quickly. Um, so try slowing down and see if that helps. Um, okay. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to get closer to my computer for a second because my eyeballs can't read these questions that I'm going to see what you're saying. Oh, you're all just saying the kindest things. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Christine. You guys are the nicest. Okay. That was a really close version of my face. Sorry. I think when we do this tomorrow, I'm going to have to like wear my spectacles or something so that I can read the comments. Um, you guys, thanks for being here for this. I was, uh, I was a little nervous to do this. I mean, I, I, I don't know who would it be to sit in front of <laughs> a YouTube and talk for two straight hours. I'm wicking now. So these are our wicks. We use paper core wicks. Um, they just get a really nice, even clean burn. There's a lot of options out there. You can get cotton core wicks. There's paper core wicks. There's like full paper, complete paper wicks. Um, there's wooden wicks. I've been talking a lot to people on the DMs. Um, I love all your candle questions in the DMs. So thank you about wooden wicks. Um, I tried those a lot in the beginning. In fact, we did a travel candle that I really wanted to be a wooden wick candle. And I like them. I do like them a lot. They're expensive. So they're a little more expensive to source. And so I wanted to consider that as we were scaling the company, like, you know, what will this look like in our margins? And they are finicky. You know, I feel like just about every five candles I would burn, one of them would like kind of putz out on me, wouldn't burn fully. Um, you have to like perfectly wooden wick correctly based on the vessel size to get the throw you want. The throw is um, how much scent comes out of your candle. So there's a cold throw and a hot throw. Um, so when you pick up a candle in a store and you go, oh, I love this one, that's the cold throw. But then when you burn your candle in your house and you're like up on your staircase and you're like, oh my gosh, it smells amazing up here. And you're like, oh, it's the candle I'm burning down in the kitchen. That's your hot throw. And that's a really good hot throw if it's throwing all the way up your stairs. 
Um, but if you walk into a bathroom and you have a candle burning and you can't smell it, that is a bad hot throw. And there are candles that can have good cold throws, bad hot throws, good hot throws. You can't smell the candle at all when it's cold. Cold. Um, and the key is to have a candle that has a good cold throw and a good hot throw, and that it smells the same in both instances. Um, so back to what I was talking about with wooden wicks, I was struggling with that. I, I, I thought the cold throw would be amazing, but then I wouldn't smell it when we were burning it. I love the crackling aspect, but for me, I, I, I enjoy a stronger scent. And that was more important to me than the like kind of that crackling sound. I was like, well, I think I can just put on a sound machine and we'll listen to the crackling. And um, I'd rather have a stronger throw. Not to say that there aren't some out there because there are, and there are definitely some wooden wicks that are a little more spendy that do an amazing hot throw. Um, but I think like if you're doing them at home, I think that's really fun to experiment with when you're just buying two or three wicks. But when you're buying thousands and thousands of them, it's definitely something to take into account when you're like making sure that your prices can stay um, at a consistent state for your clients and your customers. So there's my spiel on wooden wicks. This one is a paper. So we're going to put this in our nine ounce jar. We're making a nine ounce jar. These are our amber jars with our white X. Um, our branding all came from right before I started Wax Buffalo. I was doing documentary travel work and we did some work in Switzerland. And, and I loved, we actually were in France, Switzerland, Italy. It was like this whole Europe tour. It was the best documentary work ever. Um, <laughs> it was like a really good trip. But when you're in Europe, all of the apothecaries there, um, like when you go in to get ibuprofen, they come in amber jars. They're all with those Swiss crosses. Um, they're beautiful. You feel like you're in like a bougie apothecary and it's literally their drugstore. And I was like, just really taken back by that. So when I came back and we started the candle company, um, originally, like when I was just playing around, I was just making candles in pickle jars and old tins. I would go to thrift stores and buy the weirdest jars I could find and make candles and give them to my friends. But as we started to talk about like, well, what would it look like to really sell these? Um, what I kept gravitating to was this like apothecary look. Interestingly, it started with an X, the actual apothecary X, like they had the Swiss cross. I loved it. Um, but being in the Midwest, uh, I would take those to shows and people would be like, oh my gosh, you're making Jesus candles. And I was like, oh, I mean, I love Jesus like a lot, but that's not what I'm making. And I don't want to be confusing. And so we ended up just turning it on the side to make it an X, um, which I still felt like looked very apothecary, very modern, um, but wasn't like, confusing. Um, and it just, you know, kept people from thinking I was doing something I wasn't. They, they you yeah. know. So that's what, that's what we have. We are at a point where this is cooled pretty significantly. Um, and I think we're going to pour it in just a few minutes. You can use a thermometer at home. You can use a candy thermometer, um, or, you know, any type of thermometer you'd use in your kitchen. I will warn you that soy wax is very easy to clean off the first few times, but as you're using equipment in your kitchen over and over again, it will start to wear. That's what I did in my kitchen. I destroyed all of our pots and pans and thermometers and, um, pictures and just everything. We basically had to replace it all. Um, now I was also making like a hundred candles a night, like in my kitchen. So it takes a while to get there, but, um, if you're using a thermometer, I would definitely say use it a few times. And then if you're like, this is the way I'm going to do it, maybe just invest in one that's just for your candles. The other way we do it at the wax Buffalo, um, we actually just do it by touch. So I know like there's a big, like uh, baking bread sensation going on right now. So like, you know, when you make sourdough bread, and you get to the point where you're going to add the water and you want it to feel room temperature. And the way that I was taught to do that was to actually just, you turn on the faucet and you put your hand under there and you keep moving it back and forth between the, the, the like hot and the cold. And you have it run over your fingers until you kind of can't feel it anymore. If that makes sense. And that's how you're like, that's room temperature without having to use a thermometer. Um, that's kind of what we do with our candles. We wait until we can feel it. This is what we teach in all of our candle pouring classes too. It's kind of fun. Um, and, and weird, but we definitely like go around the room and we're like, okay, now everyone touched their picture. How are you feeling? You know, and it's like, oh, it's a little too hot. Oh, now we're getting there. And so when you start to feel like it's body temperature for sure is like key if you can wait that long. Um, but if it's just a little bit warmer than your body temperature, you're pretty safe to pour. And that's what we're at right now. So we're going to pour our beautiful candle, our beachy suntan lotion. I'm really happy with this. It smells amazing. It's like coconutty. With a little banana. It's like that. What is that? Sunday? Is that banana boat or whatever? Like, um, 
uh, suntan lotion you would put on as a kid. And when you go to the beach, you're like, the beach actually smells like sand and sweat and old fish water, but it's the people that all smell like coconut oil and banana and the sunblock. And like, that's the smell that I love. And this is what this smells like. So we might have to do this for summer. Someone tell Nicole, tell the boss. It might be changing up. I'm just kidding, Nicole. I won't do that to you. And we have just poured a beautiful candle. So when you're doing this at home, um, you can basically use anything to keep your wick in place. Uh, like when I first started, I would just use pencils and I would basically, I'm going to show you with these little sticks, move the wick into the middle so that see how they're both like, can you see there? Um, I, I honestly think like you can use so much equipment at home without having to spend money to do this. If you have the right, if you have wax. I mean, essential oils are so hot everywhere. I'm sure you have essential oils in your cupboard. Get some wax, make your little candle. Um, the biggest thing to find is wicks and you can definitely like, we have some suggestions for you. If you want to hit us up, um, you can also get our DIY kits on our I'm just making sure it's not my people's. Okay, no. Um, you can get our DIY kits on our website. And right now they're 15% off with this um, promotion that we're doing with Renegade. And you'll see the code on the top of our website. So when you click through, look at the black bar on the top and it gives you the code to get your 15% off. And we offer free shipping with any order over 50. So you're in a good place today. That said, um, so you can definitely get our little kit. And we tried to make it super affordable and allow you to just use things in your kitchen. So at Wax Buffalo, we use these very bougie wick holders, which are these little silver ones. Um, but you can use a clothespin at home. You can use pencils. You can do the stir stick like I just did. Um, when I first started Wax Buffalo, I started with $100, and that's all I would spend. Um, and as I sold candles, I would put the money back. So I would sell the 12 candles that it that I made, and then I would take that money and I would buy more wax and more oils and more jars, and I would make a little more money. And then I would take that $200 and I would put it back in. And I grew the company like incredibly slowly. We are um, five years old and um, we're currently in 80 boutiques across the US. We're in the Midwest version of Whole Foods or the Midwest region of Whole Foods. Um, and I know I probably could have scaled it. I've been reading a lot about like, you know, how do you scale a company and like, could I have done it faster? And I think I could have if I had decided to invest more money. I was reading an article um, on uh, cultivate, cultivate and create. Uh, it's the um, that amazing like conference they do in Utah, and it was these two women that were talking about this really cool brand that they created where you could rent furniture from them. And they were talking about like they both were had like seven hundred dollars to invest each. Um, and she was saying there's like another company that just started doing the same thing they're doing and was able to put like a hundred thousand in and they're they they're they're they've already surpassed them um but all that to say like i think i just i wanted it to be slow and my purpose for creating a soy candle company had more to do with the candles i wanted to see in my house and then the way i wanted to work and so at wax buffalo there's about 10 of us that work there and we all work pretty differently it's like our motto work differently um some of us have families some of us have like um, graduate programs we're in or, um, jobs we love, but we also love Candleland. So it's a side hustle or adventures. Um, one of our girls is currently in Guatemala serving, which is really rad. Um, so we really just look at Candleland like a place to come together and collaborate and do something beautiful, but it cannot be like the soul of like who we are. Um, that has to be like found in other things, right. And like our faith and our family and our adventures in our lives. And so we work differently. So sometimes um, we kind of work weird hours. Some people come in super early in the morning so they can be with their kids in the morning. Um, some of us come in late. That's me. Or like later at night with a whiskey in hand. Um, we take a lot of work home, all of us. Um, but when we are together, it's very collaborative and super beautiful. And um, it just feels like a big family. So, um, I, and, and I think all that to say is one of the things that I, I realized was that like Wax Buffalo could be a lifestyle brand. So it, there's like the ability to scale your brand and make it gigantic. And that's an awesome thing to do as well, you know, and, and make tons of money or um, have investors or sell it uh, and then go live on a beach that smells like the candle we just made. Um, but then there's also the ability to create a brand that just is considered a lifestyle brand. And I think that might be us where we look at it and go like, this is the way I want to live. And this company will allow me to live it that way. And meanwhile, we just like love what we're doing and we love who we're working with. And that seems like the ultimate dream, right? Um, yeah. 
So now sometimes that dream gets a little scary, like when the whole world shuts down, but um, at least we're all in it together. And, and that feels a little bit safer when you don't feel safe. Um, okay. I had to stand because my leg was cramping up a little bit. Um, how are we doing in comment land? Oh, thank you for saying that, Kelly. Okay. I think we're doing good. No questions, right? I am curious as to, they populate up, right? So if there's more questions, they'll move up. I don't need to scroll or get my face all up in that screen again. Learning the things about YouTube. Should we make another candle? Okay, I'll do the intro again. In case you're new, I am Alicia Reisinger, uh, and I am the founder of Wax Buffalo. We are a pure soy candle company here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, we have the cutest little shop that is not open right now, uh, a little retail shop that we opened a year ago. This is going to be our one-year birthday, a retail shop. So in our shop, we have all of our candles. We have reed diffusers and melts and all kinds of dreamy things, T-shirts and totes that are part of Wax Buffalo. But then we also curated a ton of beautiful lines across the country, um, makers and designers and just people that we have fallen in love with. And so in our retail shop, it's very modern and fun, um, and it's full of like beautiful skincare and bougie cocktail mixers and all kinds of things like that. And then of course our candles in the back, we do all of the production. And so we make anywhere from um, two to 500 candles a day right now. And then we send those out to all of our friends and family and customers. And that production is still going on. Um, interestingly, my parents live super close to our studio. And so in order to keep everything COVID safe, most of us have gone home and are working out of our homes right now like this. Um, and like, doing all of our emailing and connecting with our wholesalers. We have 80 wholesalers across the U S um, and then we're also in the Midwest region of whole foods. Um, but my cutie parents are holding down pouring and fulfillment right now. Um, I get the cutest pictures from them every day and we do our FaceTimes and we check in and dad is a one man fulfillment machine. And so, and all the little notes that you get in your boxes, um, those are from my mama, my mom writes. And she literally like, has so much love for each of you as she writes them. Your candles are made and and packed with such love right now. And then, um, so everything's very clean. Uh, you know, they're wearing their gloves, they're being careful and they're not going anywhere. And they're literally going from their house to the studio and back to their house. And they're the only ones that are in there right now. Uh, it's crazy, right? I mean, I think all of us are coming up with like new solutions and, um, oh my gosh, Arlene, hi. <laughs> Arlene is my friend from college and she lives in Florida and she's beautiful. And I just saw her name come in. <laughs> Hi. Um, so anyway, my parents are doing a lot of the like just crazy, crazy. <laughs> I'm so happy to see your name. <laughs> um, the, just the crazy work uh, that's just keeping us alive. And then um, we drop things out on the back porch. And um, our girl Tessa has been designing some crazy, beautiful things for Mother's Day. And Jen has been working hard at her house, creating something that's very secret, but you're going to love. Um, and so she's been working on something. So we're all basically in our homes, just like doing our thing, getting on our Zooms. And then we drop things off in the back steps. Mom wipes them down and takes them inside. And um, it's crazy. I, I'm, I'm, I have been doing this, uh, this episodic type YouTube episodic thing where I like um, interview different makers and creators across the country. And we talk about how things have changed because of everything going on with the coronavirus right now. And it is just so interesting to me the way that people have like one been forced to pivot, but then also the way that they do it. And then not only pivot, but then look within their companies and try to figure out ways to help those around them. It's been beautiful seeing just like the small business communities come together and love on each other and support each other. I, it's, it's a really, really scary time. But then I also think that like you're, it's that like, um, Mr. Rogers quote, where he said, his mom said, look for the people doing good things. Or look for the people that are helping. And I am seeing it within my own community, within my maker community, within my friends. And that is like filling my heart. It's really beautiful. Um, so a little bit about what we're doing there. Okay. I'm going to make another candle. So we use pure soy wax. Uh, and it's real pretty. It looks like this. Sorry, my my gigantic mic is in the way. Isn't this cool though? This is John's mic. John is my husband and he has this gigantic mic that he uses at work. So he's letting me use it today. <laughs> um, so I would have good audio for you. So here's our beautiful soy wax. And I'm going to put three cups in. For a nine ounce candle, uh, about three cups is what you'd want. So if you like get yourself some soy wax off the old 
Amazon, or if you get our candle pouring kit, we've pre-measured everything for you. And those are online right now, our DIY kits, and they're all on sale because of Renegade. And you can find the, the sale code up top on our website. It's a little black bar and it gives you the code. Um, so you can come in and do that. So we're going to start it. Um, when I first was making candles in my kitchen, I would literally like fill, here's my little stove, um, like pots all over. We had this like bigger range from when we moved in. It was like an old school one. So I could get six pots on there and I would fill every pot up with hot water. And then I would put all my cans in there and then I would just melt. And as soon as one was done, I'd pull it off and I had my towels and I'd put a new one on. And we had big boxes of wax back by the stove. And then we had them back over here. Um, <laughs> There was wax and oil everywhere. We would on like many, many occasions, like take a drink of coffee and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, that was, there was definitely like oil in that, like fragrance oil in that cup. <laughs> and I was like using all of our like kitchen goods to make things. And um, I would use like our wooden spoons to stir. And then all of a sudden we didn't have any wooden spoons for actual like home usage. And uh, I did that for probably two years before we finally moved out of here. And we moved into a tiny little back room in the middle of town and started making candles there. Um, but now we're in our own space in the Haymarket in Lincoln, Nebraska, where we have a whole production space. And then we also have a whole room on the side that we throw big parties and um, we do big candle making parties. And so every first Friday we throw a party and we usually collaborate with another maker or business owner in town. Um, June, which we don't get to do, was supposed to be a cocktail making party, which was going to be super fun. We were going to make a candle and then learn how to make cocktails. Um, but we've also done like collaborations with Sarah cider and we did like a cider tasting one We've done chocolate tastings. Um, we did floral arrangements. We like made Palo Santo bundles, like these little Palo Santos are a little X. And then we did like flower wrapping. Um, so each first Friday, there's some sort of collaboration happening. And when we're all allowed to be together again, there will be some great celebrations and maybe cotton candy. Cause that just makes me feel like the world's getting better when we can eat cotton candy again. Um, so we want our, our wax to melt to 170 degrees. So that's what we're letting this do. I have this tiny machine that's a portable one, so I can just do it here for you. Um, but if you're doing it at home, what you'd want to do is like fill a pot full of hot, hot water, get it to boil. And then you'd want to use like a pitcher, um, or like a measuring pitcher or anything like that would work to just use as like a double boiler. Um, and you put your soy wax flakes in there and then you just let it melt down. And that isn't going to take too long because if you're just doing it one or two candles, you probably will get that melted down in about 10 to 15 minutes, 20 max, depending upon how hot your water is. And then you'll want to pull it off. Once it hits that 170 degrees and you don't necessarily have to measure if you don't want to use a thermometer, you can just do it by touch. So once your wax has melted down, it will be like the color of honey or like olive oil, completely melted, fully liquid, pull it out of your water and then let it cool a little bit. And that's when we're going to add our oil. So let's start talking about what kind of candle we want to make. Um, I have a little beaker here. So I'm going to pour a little bit of candle oil into there. Maybe we'll do, I got this crazy oil that is, um, it has notes of absinthe in it, but then also black currant. So I thought I would try it. I have not made one of these yet. Um, I think we're going to try it, but then I think we should soup it up. So I'm putting about 10 milliliters of fragrance oil in for my candle. That is a little bit strong for a nine ounce candle. I did like a heavy pour if I'm being honest, um, but I do like strong candles. What do we think about adding black pepper, like absinthe and black pepper? I think that would be kind of spicy and fun, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna put three, four, five shakes of black pepper to give it some spicy. And I think when you're adding essential oils to fragrance oil, um, all of our fragrance oil is phthalate free and like sourced uh, from very high end companies. And so we feel like really confident about the fragrance oil that we're getting. And you always want to check that. You want to make sure there's no phthalates. Phthalates is a chemical that actually helps like make the fragrance stronger, but it's, it's kind of yucky. I, it honestly can give you headaches. It can, um, it can cause asthma problems. I totally get headaches from candles that have phthalates in it. And so that's one of the things that we keep out of our candles. Um, of course, you're going to be very safe with essential oils. And when you're making them at home, you can use like tons of essential oils. Uh, it's, it's just doesn't always make the strongest candle. So when you're using essential oils, you're going to want to put at least like 20, 
20 drops of essential oil into a nine ounce um, to get at least uh, a nice little hot throw off of your candle. Okay, so we've put our absinthe, we've got some currant in there, we've got black pepper. I always love a little bergamot, should we do it? Okay, so a little bergamot, which bergamot is um, super uplifting, which I think that'll be fun in this one. This one just sounds like a really like bougie drink that I would have. I went to this um, bar in Portland a couple years ago that was a um, uh, like beautifully themed uh bar and everything was it had like a white tile like this but then it was all backlit so every bottle like glowed um and it was all themed on the princess bride it was incredible so every drink was like based on each character and it was like um the rodents of a usual size is a drink and like the wesley drink and it was great i think i got like the six-fingered man drink or whatever okay we're at 170 so we want to let it cool just a tiny bit um, before we put our oil in. If you put your oil in when it is too hot, it will actually evaporate some of that oil out. Um, and it's just kind of a waste. So you don't get quite as strong a candle. Um, so we always let it cool at least 160, 150, but you do want to get it in there when it's still quite warm so that you can really emulsify the oil. So if you are new to this and you want to use a thermometer, that's what you're going to want to watch for. I know usually like once I've taken it off the heat, I give it about five or six minutes and then we add the oil in. Especially if it's a small batch like this, you should be able to add your oil in pretty quickly and it'll have cooled, which is great. Um, what should I tell you while we're waiting for it to cool? Um, maybe I'll tell you about uh, one of our stories, our, our candle of fragrances and the story that came from it. So um, for our spring line, we have four really beautiful scents. We have an avocado, we have a willow tree, which is a lilac scented candle. We have a hummingbird, um, which is like just kind of bright and bubbly and citrusy and sweet. Like I like just happy, like a hummingbird. Um, interestingly though, when we first started Wax Buffalo, when I first started it, one of the kits I made was a mama kit and it was about, hum it was covered in hummingbirds and this fragrance hummingbird was in it. Um, but then I did this card that was all about being brave because I don't, I like did a bunch of reading about hummingbirds and they used to be the symbol that warriors wore into battle because they considered them to be like strong um, brave animals. <laughs> I think there's, I think it's associated with, um, some ancient lore. I'll have to look it up. I'll look it up for tomorrow so I can tell you the real story. Um, but that was like when we first created, when I first created hummingbird, uh, it was for that it was for these brave boxes. I had just had, um, Satchel Y, my second baby. And I was like, that is so brave and hard to do. We need to make boxes for very brave women because it, yeah. And so yeah, I put the hummingbird on it. So we have hummingbird it's back. It hasn't been here for a couple years and it has been selling out. People love it. And then um, we did a lavender candle, which is like warm and calm and beautiful. Um, so uh, the willow tree we've had around for a while. It's a, it's a very big seller and it smells just like lilac. If you have a lilac bush out into in your yard, um, this is what this candle smells like. It's pretty spot on. I grew up with lilac bushes all around my house. I grew up in Kansas City um, in this little town called Belton. And um, we lived in a little cute little bungalow house. And in the back, it was just like surrounded in lilacs. And my mom would always go out and snip the lilacs and we would have them all over the house. And you know how lilac season is. You have like two weeks and then they're gone. And so we would literally just like lilacs, lilacs, lilacs for two weeks while we could in all the little ball jars. And I still do it. I don't have lilacs here at the lake house, um, but there's a park pretty close and they literally have, I kid you not, I counted once 45 huge bushes, lilac bushes, and they're all against the highway. Um, and so now I keep scissors in my car and I just go snip like two little snips. <laughs> I pull the car over and go snip, snip. And then I come home and put them in my ball jar. Um, but when the two weeks is over, then I burn my willow tree candle that smells just like lilacs. And we actually have made some roller balls of it for people. Um, I, it, it's interesting to, to see, like, that's a memory I have. But when someone comes into the studio and they smell the lilac candle, it, you can see it. You can see them go back to, like, where that lilac is in their life. It's definitely a scent that sends people somewhere, which is really cool. I love seeing that. Um, okay, I think it's been about five minutes. Oh, thanks, Jen. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to pour this in. So again, we put in uh, a little absinthe, a little currant. Uh, we put some black pepper in there and we put some bergamot. So it just smells like kind of like spicy. I, it smells like a drink I would love to drink. Um, 
or where. So I guess if I spilled my drink on myself like I do a lot, this would be great. So we're pouring it in. It's probably right at 160 right now, which is fine. Um, as long as it's not as evaporating out and it's it's not so hot that you're seeing any steaming. Um, and now we're going to stir. So at the Wax Buffalo, in Wax Buffalo Candleland, we stir 40 times. Um, honestly, you cannot stir too much, but you can stir too little. You really want to make sure that your oils are emulsified with your wax. Um, and I just, I when I was first making them and I was like, a one woman machine here with my 97 buckets all over my counters, I would literally just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I would count to 40. And I just created like, this was enough to get it in. Um, and it takes about 60 seconds to stir 40 times. You always want to stir slowly. Stirring too fast can add bubbles to your wax and your oil. It's almost like, think of it like a meringue or like a whipped cream. Like as the faster you stir, the more air you add. And so it gets that like fluffiness. Well, you don't want that in candles. That is what will cause like droppage or air pockets or like little pinholes. If you ever like make a candle that has like little pinholes, that's, it could be that you were stirring too fast. So maybe try just stirring slowly. This is one of our favorite things in the studio. Um, we all just love to like stand around and stir in the pitchers and they make this clinking sound. It's like ding, 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 ding when we're using the big metal ones. Um, and it's like in the last like four weeks, I realized that was like one of the sounds I miss really bad. It's like, it just sounds like happiness. It's a very happy place there and everybody's happy. And a lot of times I think like we pour a cup of coffee and then we kind of tend to gather in the production room and that's usually where we talk and someone's usually making candles or two people are making candles. And you know what it's like when you're on a team and everyone just like knows where to pick up. We, we all are trained in making candles, but as like the company has grown, some of us have kind of moved out to like work in different arenas. Like um, Nicole does our wholesale, you know, and um, dad does all of our fulfillment. And a lot of times I'm doing more of like the collaborative work and the marketing. And so when we come back to the studio, we all tend to gravitate towards whoever is, is boring and start taking over their pictures and just stirring and talking and drinking our coffee. And I miss it. I'm excited to get back to that. Um, so I think I've stirred 40 times. I, I wasn't counting, but I was. Uh... We have three huge lilac bouquets. Oh, do you think, okay, do you think it's going to be in three weeks? Um, I want to go out and do like the, the trimming at the park. Uh, I was I was already started doing my drive by and I was trying to remember because when we opened Wax Buffalo, we opened for Mother's Day weekend. Um, yes. I have no clue. I love you. <laughs> Me either. I was like, well, they bloomed for Mother's Day uh, last time. So <laughs> let's I'll just I'll roll over there. That'll be like my Mother's Day gift to myself is I'll go to the park and sit myself a couple. That's awesome. How How long did it take you to get your lilac bushes to grow or were they there when you? I know nothing about plants. I know me either. I like to pretend that I do. I even put plants in our store all over the place. And then they started to like wither and I had to like pass them on to my dad so that he could, which he's in the store. He does all of our fulfillment. So he comes out and like, he knows each plant, how much water they need, if they need sprayed, if they need moved or turned. <laughs> and then people come into the store and they're like, I love how you have plants everywhere. And I'm always like, yeah, it's not me. I like to take credit for it. <laughs> Uh, okay, this smells amazing. This may be something that we're going to have to create. I, I've said this now with every single candle. Making candles is so fun, right? Uh, I, I hope that like uh, if you if you come to the website, we have all of our DIY kits on there right now, and they're all on sale. They're fifteen percent off with the code. So when you get to the website, look on the top. There's a black bar, and it gives you the code so you can get your fifteen percent off. And then of course, um, oh Mary, I know. Brucey's the best. You guys should do uh, FaceTimes from your different like production rooms and, and uh, chat about like how to wrap pallets and stuff. <laughs> my, uh, my friend Mary's on and uh, she and dad used to work together, but then I stole him for Wax Buffalo. Uh, he was, uh, he worked in a production and press room for 40 years and Mary's one of his besties from back in the day. And uh, back in the day, I say a year ago. Yeah. See? Yeah. He would love it. Just do a little FaceTime and he'll like pack boxes and saran wrap things. And Okay, so we're going to let the candle sit um, till it gets to about 130, 120, 100 degrees. <laughs> um, I love it right around like 198. It's kind of your body temperature. Um, and the way you can do that without a thermometer. So I have ne I've never used thermometers in my candle making. Um, 
one, I was very cheap. The thermometers are very expensive. And so I didn't ever want, I didn't want to buy, um, you know, 15 thermometers with all of the different fragrances that I was using. And so I started to train myself on how to do it through touch, which I'm happy to share. So, and then that's why we didn't put a thermometer in our candle making kit. So if you, uh, Right now, baking bread is super popular, right? And um, if you make sourdough bread, when you add the water to sourdough in order to get like your perfect consistency, you have to add it at um, body temperature. And the way I was taught to do that is like you turn on your sink and you let the water run over your fingers and then you kind of go up hot or down cold and you go back and forth, back and forth until the water has run where you can't feel it anymore. And that's body temperature. And that's kind of what we do in candle making. So um, we'll kind of touch the, the pots knowing that they're starting to cool until you're like, oh yeah, that feels like my hand or, or even just like a little warmer than my hand. That's totally fine too. Um, but we like to let ours cool a little bit. You can honestly pour a candle pretty hot. We are, because we're making so many, we've kind of come up with a technique that helps you get that really even clean looking, um, like professional looking candle on the first pour so that we're not having to go back and top or clean. Um, to clean a candle is like industry terms, but like basically you use like a heat gun or when I first started, I used to use my hair, I'm like a hair dryer that I bought <laughs> from Target um, because it was cheaper than the heat gun, right? Like I was trying to do small biz. And so um, you can hair dry your candles and it'll, so if you do that at home and you want that pretty beautiful, like say you're making it for a gift, that's what you could do. So like if you get that pocket drop or um, you poured it a little too hot, that's okay. And it takes a while to kind of figure out, especially because every surface can also affect your candles. Let me tell you about that while we're waiting for the school. Um, different surfaces can cool your candle at different rates. So say you're using like a, like a granite countertop. Granite is always super cold. And so it's going to pull your candle down faster at different, like right from the core, um, or it's going to make that bottom part like um, cool faster than you necessarily want it. You want it to kind of cool evenly. You want it to be like a very happy, like mellow, just like chilled out, warmed up, cool down candle, right? Um, metal and like a granite or stone type countertop can mess with it. It's not the end of the world. If you're making it at home and you're just going to burn it at home, um, it's never going to hurt your candle if it's dropped in the middle. You know, it'll, it'll find the middle. And because soy wax is so forgiving, um, remember it has a memory, but it's forgiving on that first burn. And so like, you'll just have to probably burn it a little bit longer than two hours, maybe three hours on your first burn to get that full wax pool. Um, but that's easy peasy and it's in your house. And who doesn't want candles burning right now all day long? <laughs> That's, we start like in the morning. So I would say the best surfaces to put your candle down on. Um, I really like cardboard. So you could, you could um, chop up a couple boxes and just make like a double layer of cardboard, which gives you a nice even surface. And you can set your candles on that. Um, you can also use just old beach towels. Uh, now I would use old towels because it will kind of mess with your towel if you're dripping on it. And when you first start making candles, it does get very messy. Um, but a towel is great too. I would double it. Um, if you have like a stone countertop, if you have, um, like a, uh, um, like a wooden, like if you have like a butcher block, it's amazing. That's like the best thing to pour on, but it does get messy and it's harder to clean out of wood. So, um, okay. I'm just making sure I'm not missing notes. Okay. I think I'm doing okay. I feel like I have been talking for a long time. What are we at? Oh yes, I have been for an hour and 22 minutes. Um, I'm going to check this and we are at. I think it's still a little bit too hot. Um, so let's talk about, let's talk about another story of another candle that we've made. So we did the willow tree. We talked about red fern, talked about Armitage. Um, if you're just tuning in, Armitage is the candle I made about the street I lived on in Chicago. It's where John and I were married. We were actually married in like a tiny park uh, on Armitage street. And then um, we didn't want to like, uh, we were pretty poor and so we didn't want to like rent anything. And so we got a venue, which was this darling coffee shop hookah bar that was about six blocks away from the park. And then we all walked from the park, the entire wedding. It was probably my most favorite part of my wedding was that walk. So we walked the streets that we always walked all the way down. My like dress was dragging in the Chicago streets. And then our entire like everyone that came to our wedding was behind us. Um, and it was so fun. People were cheering while we had to walk by a firehouse and they were like, yeah, and um, like ringing stuff for us. And so then we walked all the way down and on the other end of Armitage street was that hookah bar and coffee shop. And we had a big reception there. 
uh, big but small. We had a small wedding. Um, and it was super fun. And we like danced and ate great food. Um, and so then we lived there. So we actually like got married in a park. We actually walked past the front door to our apartment to the hookah bar. Um, and then of course, like that was just like where we lived then for that first year. And Chicago does not necessarily smell good, but where we lived, we lived above Lush. If you've ever heard of Lush Cosmetics, Lush was like just like two stores down and then Starbucks was like two stores down. So it was like a coffee shop. And then across the street from us was this place called Vosges Chocolate, <laughs> which is amazing chocolate. They put crazy stuff in their chocolate, like curry and stuff. And it's really good. Um, and so we had the chocolate place. We had Lush. Um, Kiehl's was across the street this way. And then we had Starbucks. And so Armitage Street to me smelled amazing like vanilla and blackberry and coffee and clove and cream. And so like when you would walk out into Armitage, you were just like, oh my goodness, it smells amazing. And so that is what I created this candle to smell like. And when I first created it and, and, and it came together, I was like, this smells like, this smells like I'm 21. No, how old was I when I got married? 25 years old again. And I'm newly married and I'm happy. And <laughs> like it was, it was, it's, it sent, it sends me back. It sends me back every time. And so like when I, Poor, when I create Armitage, I always hope that like, it is like the Armitage in your life, whatever that like happy place or like those moments that you go back to that feel like so special. Um, and I think scents totally do that to us, right? Like you smell a scent and you're immediately sent there. And um, that Armitage one is like pretty special to me. Uh, secret sauce. When John and I were in college, we would actually drive to Armitage Street because we thought it was so pretty and we would like park our car and make out. So we were destined to like live there <laughs> and that's where we lived. And then we ended up moving to Nebraska. Um, in fact, actually my grandma was in her third bout of breast cancer. And so we um, decided to come back here and we were just going to live here for a year and kind of like clean her gutters and make her dinner sometimes and just kind of like be with her. Cause you just feel pretty yucky after all the treatments. And then we we're going to piece back out of here. And that was like 13 years ago. We just never did. We really like it here. And so now we live in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's where our shop is. We have a little retail shop in the hay market. And then we also do all of our production there too. So we have a whole room in the back. There's about 10 of us that work at Wax Buffalo making pure soy candles with phthalate free, um, high blend essential or fragrance oils and, um, and then essential oil blends as well. Uh, we all pour in the back there. That's where we ship. We have a whole fulfillment center back there that my dad runs. That's, I stole him from the from Kansas city. And he now runs all of our production. So every package is lovingly packed by my dad. And then, um, next to our production room, we actually have a big room that we just opened about six months ago that I miss and is empty right now, but we throw big parties in there. So we do candle making parties every first Friday. And every first Friday is a collaboration with another maker, uh, which is really fun. So we've done like Saro cider, um, tastings. And then we all poured like apple cider candles. Um, and we've done chocolate tastings. We've done really cool floral collaborations. The one for May was supposed to be with of the earth florals and we were going to make flower crowns. That's what we were supposed to be doing this Friday, um, which is sad or the first Friday in May. And then, um, in June we were going to do a cocktail making class. Um, so we have like some really beautiful things we do every first Friday and then you make candles and you get to pick really crazy vessels. We have, um, like I brought this, like, like we have these big, like unicorn ones and we have stone ones and, um, like really cool stuff, uh, concrete. So that's what we do in this, the, the party room. And then you can also, um, do your own parties there. So like we have a lot of like bachelorette parties and bridal showers. And, um, we did a lot of fun, like family parties for Christmas. People did like almost like a family reunion style and everybody came in and poured candles together, which was really cool. Um, we do a lot of corporate parties. So a lot of like team building, um, we have a lot of like small businesses in town that have come in with their teams and we teach them all how to make candles, um, open a bottle of wine. It's just like a really fun afternoon. So we do a lot of those as well in that space. And then of course we have the retail space out front. Um, in the front is all of our candles and we do a lot of like, uh, we've, we have our candles, our, um, diffusers, our t-shirts, our aprons, um, beautiful handmade blankets made by my mom. We have all kinds of beautiful things that are just made by wax buffalo. And then we also have curated a lot of really cool makers from across the U.S. We're always looking for new and beautiful makers and artists to put in the storefront. Um, and it's been just like such a hub of like beauty and um, just fun community. Um, we do some fun parties up there. And then our side room, um, we always have like a rotating maker or creator in that room. And um, 
we made that room really inexpensive because when we first moved out of my kitchen, someone gave us that gift and let us have like a workroom that was pretty inexpensive. And I, until I started looking at real estate to like buy your, or to like rent your own place, I didn't realize how expensive it was and didn't realize like what a gift that was. So we wanted to like create that space to be a gift to others. Um, so that's a pretty neat space, right? right now. And that has, um, our, our girl Sapan is in there and she sources all these, the most beautiful handbags. Um, and she works with makers in Thailand. So she's over there all the time working with them. She designs them. Um, and it's all like beautiful and sustainable and fair trade. And, um, it's a really cool way to just support like the local girl gang in Thailand because we're all the local girl gang. Right. Um, okay. I feel like I've talked myself into room temperature. We've done it. Okay, so we're gonna wick the jar. These are our jars. Um, they're all pretty minimalistic, amber, nine ounce jars. We also, on Monday, are getting in these big 16 ounce. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for them. They were stuck at the printer because of the coronavirus and they're coming. Um, so those are gonna be out really soon once we get all those poured. They have a cute little beanie stamp, but they're pretty minimalistic. Uh, my house, as you can see, is pretty minimalistic and we're kind of modern. And so when we created, when I created the candle, I wanted it to be modern and minimalistic and just like a fun like look and so that's what our classic looks like we have some other fun ones like um you can see that I turned this this one's this is our Lincoln candle which I think is really cute this was like made by um one of our friends in town her name's Meg Megan and she owns paper kite and she um drew this isn't it cute and so then we did this collaboration with her and all of the scents are different places in Lincoln. Um, so we have like Ivana Cone, the Haymarket, which is where we're at. This one's like coffee. Uh, we have the Orchard. Uh, we had we made a scent for Paper Kite that we just think smells like her. So in at Christmas time, they're hot cocoa candles, like little kid hot cocos. And right now she has like this bubbly grapefruit candle that's really, really beautiful. Um, so we do some fun collaborations and white labeling with like, um, really cool people in town as well that we're really excited about. And it's fun. Like you get to sit and talk and you're basically doing this, like, let's put a little of this in and a little of that. And does that smell like you? And does this look like you? Okay. You have a candle now. And so, um, that's been really fun too. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have to like tell somebody about this one, the absinthe current black pepper, delicious candle. Okay, so we're gonna wick our jar. We use a paper core wick. Um, there's all kinds of different wicks that you can use. For our nine ounces, we like this one. Um, you can also find cotton core wicks, you can find cotton spun wicks, cotton braided wicks, full paper wicks. Um, those are all kind of my favorites when you're looking for something that burns really cleanly and you can feel comfy having in your home. Wood wicks are also amazing, also super clean. Um, I love wooden wicks and I think there's some really great brands that have them. When I first started, uh, they were a lot, they were, they were spendy, especially five years ago. And as I thought about trying to scale up and, um, use a wooden wick in our entire line, it just made me a little nervous, but I definitely do sometimes mess with them at home and like make myself a wooden wick candle. And I was thinking about maybe creating a DIY kit just with a wooden wick to try, like maybe do a fun vessel like a concrete vessel or something like that, or use like a, a local maker to have like a collaboration of like a wooden wick and a new vessel. And I just have all the ideas right now, especially because I'm here and I'm like, you know what we should do? Oh, okay. So we're going to pour. Do you print the jars or have them printed and sent to you? Oh, such a good idea. Uh, I mean, such a good question. Um, Okay. Uh, we actually have them printed. So when we first, uh, when I first was creating my candles by myself, I actually, um, had these cut out as stickers. Um, so I had stickers that went on the front. We had stickers on the top. When I first started, we actually had tags that I tied on, but now we actually have them printed. Um, and that's actually what's wrong with our 16 ounce is they're stuck at the printer and they, um, because we have them printed outside of Nebraska, I wish that we could get these printed. Um, locally, that would be rad, but we haven't found a glass printer here in Lincoln. So uh, they're stuck. They're just, they're in lockdown. And so they've been there for about four weeks. However, this was a gigantic time saver. It was a little bit of a, um, we had to work with it quite a bit um, just to find the right type of printing on glass that wasn't scratching when they got to us or like um, making sure that everything looked really clean and vibrant. I think sometimes like um, we actually have, printed um, whiskey glasses as well. Um, this is not whiskey, although I wish it was. And so we have these, which are really cute. Um, but it took a little while, like on the clear glass to get that very vibrant white. 
Um, they sometimes have to do a double print, things like that. So it, it, you can totally hit me in the DMs or um, on our website and we can hook you up with details if you're looking for a printer. We're really happy with ours. I love sharing that kind of stuff. These are done, like this one is a vinyl. Um, so we kind of go back and forth based on like how big the batch is that we're creating and what we want it to look like and what we want it to feel like. And like with these, I wanted them to be washable, obviously, because so we put a candle in these and then once it's done, you can clean it out and you drink your whiskeys or your water on your YouTubies. Um, and so I wanted those printed. So hopefully that answered your question. Thanks for asking. Um, okay. We're going to pour a candle. This is my favorite part. I also really love when we do these in classes. Um, you know, after you've been doing it for so long, you're just like, Wah! people will do like, they're like, do we tip it like a beer? And I was like, I never even thought of that. But no, no, you do not have to do that. Um, you do want to pour slowly. Um, it's it's what we talked about before with the air. So when, when you see like hand poured, small batch, like when you are pouring with your hand, like it really does take a hot minute to pour a candle like that. But to get the best candle and the best pour, you want to do it slowly so you don't get that air in there. The other thing you can do to hold your wick together, we have these cute little like wick sticks that we use. Um, they're just like this and you can get them on the Amazon if you're looking for them. Um, and we just clip them in and that's what holds our wicks. We got real bougie when we started making more. But when I was at home and I was just learning how to do it, I didn't want to spend money. And so I would usually take like two pencils um, and just set them on my candle to hold my wick like this. So I just like rummaged through our entire house and found pens and pencils and did this to hold the wick straight. You could use that. You could use clothespins. A lot of people use clothespins and I would do that sometimes. Um, I just think like you can definitely make candles without having to buy a lot of the stuff. Buying the stuff is fun. Like this kit is super fun. We have it on the website. It's on sale for 15% off. Look at the black bar for your code. Um, but like when I first started, I literally just filled gigantic stock pots full of water. And then I used like as double boilers, I used like big old measuring bowls, you know, that you could pour like we, that we make our pancakes in. And um, it, it honestly, it cleans out of your stuff very easily. Um, if you're just making very small batches and you're doing it pretty like um, inconsistently, when you start making like a hundred candles, every night, then you definitely like will start to destroy your, your, um, kitchenware, which is what I did. I destroyed all of our pots and pans. My poor husband is an incredible cook. And he would like, he'd be like, so I can't use any of this stuff anymore. <laughs> all of our wooden spoons I broke, or they had oil on them. Like we would pull like coffee mugs out and be like, Oh, that tastes like fragrance oil. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> um, but I like would encourage you, you know, if you are getting a small kit, Start small, see if you like it. It's very therapeutic. You're going to love it, I swear. Especially when you like can waft up and like you just created that. You just created that blend and it's super beautiful and that's your candle. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use tools around your house um, to make your candles. And when I first started Wax Buffalo, I started with $100. I actually have never put any more money in. The Just when we opened our retail space, we got our very first line of credit and I cried because I was like, <gasps> But then I found out, like, after talking to a lot of people, it's a very smart thing to do when you have employees and you have rent. Like, it's smart to have, like, something to fall back on. But, yeah, I started with $100. And so I really just used the things that I had until I had fully destroyed them and could had made enough money that I could invest in, like, a wax melter or I could invest in, you know, these cute – I used to, <laughs> I used to go to the paint store and be like, it, would it be okay if I have a few of the Sir Sticks? <laughs> So all my paint sticks always said Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards because I would rotate and I would go to all the different stores in town that had them and be like, how many am I allowed to take? Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to put my face really close. Oh, thank you so much. Jacob, that was really kind. Um... Nicole, how do you get wax out of carpet? Oh, that's such a good question. It is hard. <laughs> Which we definitely had all of our carpet too. Now, one thing uh, about wax and carpet that uh, with sway wax, because um, it is a vegetable waste wax, it does come out of things better than you would think. Like definitely I can get it out of my clothes. I did make the mistake of like wearing really cute, like porous leather shoes once. It has not come out of that. Um, and then with carpet, you can like freeze it out. You can use a really warm, warm rug and try and get it out. Um, but it, yeah, <laughs> maybe put down a little tarpy if you're going to make your candles in a carpeted kitchen, which my parents had for 
15 years. So I know they exist. Um, guys, this candle smells really, really good. Uh, don't tell the boss, Nicole, but I think we might have to add this to the line. I'll write down all of the measurements, Nicole. It was absinthe and currant and black pepper. Oh, and I put a little bergamot in there because I just think bergamot should go in everything. Um, okay. How are we doing on time? We've got 20 minutes. Should we make another candle? Okay. We're doing it. Let me move this little baby, baby. Um, okay. So we're going to make another nine ounce candle and we're going to add our soy wax. So at Wax Buffalo, we're a pure soy candle company and we make all of our candles with pure soy wax. See how pretty it is? It's like this flaky, beautiful, just like wholesome looking wax. Um, and it makes beautiful, beautiful candles and you can feel very safe burning them because soy is a visual based wax. It's not um, like paraffin that is a petroleum based wax. And the reason you want to stay away from um, paraffin is that paraffin is made from petroleum. It's a derivative of petroleum as in like, um, crude oil. So, um, I'll give you my spiel. Uh, paraffin is, um, created, sorry, I got distracted because I was counting my wax. Um, so when you have the big oil drums that once all the oil has, has drained out, there's kind of like a sludge that's left at the bottom. That's like a thick kind of waxy material. Um, they scrape that out, they bleach it. And that is what they make paraffin wax out of. So when you're burning a candle that has paraffin in your home, um, that's a lot of the times why, like when you take like a picture off the wall, um, it'll have like the outline of your picture. That is that like kind of oily, yucky paraffin residue. Um, and to me, it just like scares me a little bit to have that in my body. I also get pretty bad headaches from paraffin, um, probably because it's just not like super beautiful to breathe in. So we have gone with a vegetable based soy. You could also, um, I've, I've read a lot about coconut wax, super cool. Um, and we've done some tests with that and I think it's really lovely. Um, and then beeswax, of course, is it's not vegan and we're a vegan um, candle company, but beeswax actually will help clean your air. Um, and it's a great one to burn as well. So there's lots of different options. You can go out and kind of do a little research um, and try some different things and see the candles that you like. Soy wax burns at a pretty low rate. So you get a really long burn time from your candle. So like our nine ounce candle that we're going to make today, it's going to give you a 45 to 50 hour burn time, which is awesome. Especially right now, since we're all burning candles from morning to night, like you want a nice long candle that lasts you your 40 hour work week, right? Okay. So I'm making the candle in this cute little maker. We have these on our website actually. And it's just like a little compact maker. It's going to heat up my wax for me. And then it's going to start to stir it for me. Um, in the studio, we actually use gigantic bats um, that we melt our wax. And we, we, we melt 50 pounds of wax at a time, which is much more than three cups. Um, and we have two of those babies running at all times. And uh, like when you do it at home, you can use a big pot and just use a double boiler. Um, so you don't need to have all the fancy stuff. But today I'm doing the fancy stuff so that our entire video wasn't like me facing the oven. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to let this melt. And then I'm trying to think what should we should make next. Um, maybe we'll do something kind of like we have, we've been doing a lot of fruity. I must be in a very fruity mood. Um, let's do like a peppermint. Let's do, let's do like a, a zinger. I like diffuse a lot of peppermint and eucalyptus in my house. Um, and so we're going to use a little, this is the, all of our essential oils that I'm putting in here right now are all sourced from Whole Foods. We're in Whole Foods in the whole Midwest region. And so um, we get very excited about them. And so I we use a lot of their essential oils when we do our big pouring classes. Um, we'll have a lot of our oil blends that you can use when you come into our studio, but then we'll also teach you how to oil blend. And a lot of times we like to use the Whole Foods oil. There's like a really good price point. They're clean. I feel really good about the way that they throw in a candle. Um, you can put enough in there that's strong enough, but it's not like so expensive that you feel like you used your entire bottle of oil. And sometimes that can feel a little sad. Um, okay. Okay. So we've got peppermint, eucalyptus. Uh, eucalyptus is super strong. So if you want it to be more like pepperminty, go less on the eucalyptus and more on the peppermint. Um, you can also add some like fun things like lemongrass or tangerine. I'm going to go like super classic, like eucalyptus, peppermint. It's what I diffuse when I have a cold or like, you know, like my allergies are weird. So this will be a really good candle, I think, for that. Um, also, weirdly, I love to sleep to peppermint, which I know is wrong because peppermint wakes you up and eucalyptus is like invigorating. But um, I think maybe I just like 
had a cold for a year when I was pregnant and got really used to sleeping with peppermint and eucalyptus. So I diffuse it every night. And then I always like have a candle burning, um, in the bathroom when I'm getting ready at night. Um, one of my friends, when I was younger, she always had a getting ready candle burning in her bathroom. And so I rotate like a morning candle and an evening candle and I burn them. I just have like a little lighter in my bathroom. And so when I'm doing my makeup, I usually have like a bright, like summery, orangey, grapefruity candle going. And then at night, I usually do something that's more like on the lavender eucalyptus peppermint side. And it feels like a beautiful ritual in my own home, which is important right now. Do I've been doing a lot of face masks and a lot of self-care. <laughs> um, yes, Jen, it was eucalyptus. And I put so much in. So then I had to put so much more peppermint. This is going to be a nice strong one. If you are, um, if you're thinking you want to do essential oils, I think like eucalyptus, cedarwood, peppermint, um, copal, those are all really nice and strong. Um, on the citrus side, I think if you go like grapefruit, bergamot, sweet orange is really good. Um, those will give you a bright, bright candle that's strong. Um, interestingly, uh, lemon doesn't usually throw super strong. So I always think lemon essential oil smells amazing. Um, but to make a lemon essential oil candle, you have to use a lot of it. Um, so it's a lighter one. Um, and just things to think about if you're, if you're sourcing some essential oils that you want to make a candle, um, you know, if you want a strong one, maybe start with like a eucalyptus peppermint and then, and then move on from there. Rose, super expensive, does not throw super strong. So that's one that like I definitely would diffuse, but I wouldn't necessarily put it in a candle. I also put a lot of rose on my face. Um, okay, so it's melting right now. Um, when we're in the studio, a lot of times we just like to stir it. This little machine actually stirs it for you. You can hear it. That's what you're hearing, the like little whooshing in this big mic that John gave me. <laughs> Isn't it great? It looks like I'm talking into a tiny spaceship. Um, but the gigantic mic is picking up the stirring of the wax. These little systems are really, really cool. I've been using them, um, a couple times a week. We, uh, at Wax Buffalo have been doing this like YouTube series called distance, which is a series that we, um, basically invite creators and, um, artists across the U S to come in and have a conversation with me on zoom. Um, and then we just talk about like what they're doing right now during coronavirus, while we're all like social distancing, how they've pivoted their company. Um, there's some really incredible stories. And then also like almost all of them. And this is like the part that fills my heart are doing something for their community. They're giving back, they're raising money. Um, it's very, very cool. So while we chat, I make them a candle. So they tell me about memories. They tell me about scents that they love. And then basically like what I'm doing with you right now, we just like dump stuff in there until we think it sounds good. And then we make them. And then we make a whole batch of them and we sell them that night when the episode goes live. And um, for all of the candles that we're doing for these episodes for in distance, um, we actually raise money for the LPS food bank. I'm sorry, the Lincoln Food Bank um, for the kiddos that are out of school in LPS right now. And the Lincoln Food Bank and all the local food banks right now are doing such incredible things for the kiddos um, that need a little extra help. And so that's what we've been using our episodes for is to raise a little money. Um, so I got this kit, all that to say, I got this kit and it's just been awesome. I really like it, especially when you're just trying to make like one candle and you don't want to pull out every pot and pan and stir stick in the nation. Okay, so we want this to melt to about 170 degrees. This kit does it for me. You can definitely use a thermometer at home if you have one and you want to. Um, I never did. I, I was such a cheapo with my small biz. I just didn't want to put money in that I didn't have until I had it. And then once I did had a little more money in, I had already trained myself how to not use one. And thermometers are kind of expensive. And when you're making like 10 different ones, I didn't want to ever like mix the oils, you know, because I wanted them to be very pure. Um, so basically what you're looking for is it to be fully melted and it's going to look kind of like the color of honey or like olive oil. Soy wax looks like kind of looks a little bit yellowy, um, real pretty and clear. So once it's clear, stop, pull it off. And then we're going to wait for it to get down to about 150 ish, 140 ish. I wouldn't go too far below that to add the oils. You don't want to add them in when it's too hot because they'll start to evaporate off and you're just actually just using or losing beautiful oils you're losing money. They're evaporating out and it's not going to smell in your candle. So if you let it cool a little bit, um, then put the oils in, but you still want it to be warm enough that the oils really emulsify into the wax. So if it gets too cool, then you'll start to get kind of swirling or you'll have pockets that don't smell as consistent. 
Um, so that's kind of the technique of why you put it in when it's so warm, but not too warm and not too cold. Um, so we're going to let, it usually takes about five minutes with just this tiny kit to get down to 150. Um, let's see, we have any questions. I was wondering what the sound was. Oh yeah. <laughs> I should have talked about it right in video production. When you go to school, um, when you make a movie or you make a documentary, the one thing is, um, if something sounds weird in the video, like, um, because documentary work is so like you're all over the place instead of being like, well, we have to have pristine sound. You're just always supposed to, you're supposed to call it out. So if you ever see a documentary where they're like, uh, you'll hear it like in, in lots of podcasts now they do it. Like for instance, my bulldog is snoring in the living room. And if I was being professional, I should have been like the snoring you're hearing is Gabby, the bulldog. And then it's like, once we've talked about it, you're allowed to hear it the rest of the time and it doesn't bug anyone. Um, but interestingly, isn't that a funny thing? It's like something they teach you in, in school, like just call it out and then it's done, which is interesting. Um, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Arlene. I'm so happy to see you. Um, okay. So we're going to add the oils. We decided to do our peppermint eucalyptus and it smells like real, real strong. So I think it's going to be really pretty. We're just going to pour them in. It should be right around 150, 160 degrees. Um, and then we're going to stir. So the biggest thing is, is you want to get them super emulsified into your, into your wax, the oils emulsified into your wax. Um, and so we stir 40 times. Honestly, I think if you just like stirred for a minute, you'd be good. I started counting when I was doing a lot of batches in my kitchen, I would have like six pots of water going and I would have all of them when there'd be canisters and everything on the stove. And then I had canisters cooling over here. And then this is where I poured on this <laughs> <laughs> island, all the jars were ready here. And so I would just be like, literally moving around my kitchen. Like, I would be like back here, I'd be pulling cans off, I'd be putting them here. And then I would be like pulling the next can over and then I would stir and I would count. And I was like trying, because we were, I was trying to do it fast. I didn't want anything to cool too fast. And so then I would just sit here and count one, two, three, four. And I would count to 40 and then I would pour. I, I think if you just like stir for about a minute, you're good, but you just don't want to stir too little because it doesn't like get all emulsified in. Should I say emulsify one more time? And then you don't want to stir too fast. So it's kind of like a whipping cream or a meringue. Um, you don't want that air in there. So what you want in a meringue and what you want in a whipping cream, you don't want in your candle. Um, and sometimes if you're stirring too fast, like if you're making candles at home and you're seeing some droppage or some like little pock marks, um, pinholes, sometimes you can see like you'll make a candle and it literally just looks like somebody went bink, bink, bink with a pin. Um, it could be that you're stirring too fast and there's little air pockets. So as your candle is cooling, it's pulling, like those are a little popping within there. And so then it's like adding like a little tiny of like pockmark basically. Um, so just don't, yeah, you just don't want to stir too fast. Once you've stirred at least 40 times, we're going to let it cool a little bit longer. And I like to let it cool to almost body temperature, kind of room temperature, right around like a hundred degrees. Um, you can also pour a beautiful candle at 130 degrees. One of the things we've learned though, is there's so many different types of wax. There's like lots of different types of soy wax as well. And each one is super temperamental. So how one person, you may watch like a tutorial and how one person pours wax. Um, they may be using a completely different soy wax than you, and it may be processed differently. And so um, we have found with the wax that we use and the wax that you'll get in our kits with our DIY kit, that it does a better pour if you wait to room temperature. And it gives you just a cleaner, um, more beautiful looking candle. That said, if you have a candle, I brought an example for you that looks a little like, you see the pock marks in there? That's okay. You can totally still burn it. You give it 48 hours and that candle is ready to go. But if you're making your candle for a gift and you want it to look clean and beautiful, wait till it's room temperature. And then, oh my gosh, if that happens, just use a, a hairdryer, heat that top layer up till it's all cooled to that, what it looked like when it was um, completely liquid. So that kind of first level of that, like kind of yellowy olive oil color, you know, like what a candle looks like. Heat it all up and then just let it cool and you'll get a really nice pristine top. So don't beat yourself up about it. When I first was making candles, I had to do a lot of cleaning and a lot of fixing. Now we're all like pretty, like we just kind of know how it works and we know how to feel. Um, everyone in the studio, we all just like feel, nope, it needs a little bit longer. In fact, we'll be talking to each other and you'll just see like girls like, no, nope. It's like, we all just do it automatically. <laughs> yeah. That one's not ready yet. Like you're not, you don't even need for me to tell you that you're on it and you're pouring your own candles, but I just wanted to you know, feel the pictures. 
Guys, I have been talking for two hours <laughs> straight. <laughs> I hope this has been fun. I hope that you're learning some candle making skills um, and a little bit about our company. Before I go and why this is cooling, and I'm sorry if you've heard this spiel now more than once, but um, we are Wax Buffalo. Uh, I am Alicia Reisinger, and I'm pouring candles in my kitchen today. And that is where I started pouring candles about five years ago. I started pouring candles when my daughter was born with a cleft lip and palate. Uh, I did a lot of research on candles and realized that what I was burning in my home was not clean. And I had a lot of candles that were made with some yucky stuff, colorants I didn't like, and paraffin. After reading a lot about paraffin, I didn't want that in my home anymore. So I started making candles in pickle jars and soup cans for my friends. And um, then I had a friend talk me into trying to sell them. And at first I was like, no, 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 that's scary. Like, I, you know, like it's one thing to hand somebody a candle. It's another thing for, to ask somebody to spend money on a candle. And then also just the vulnerability of like, if they don't want to, right? But I did end up trying it. I made my very first batch of 12 candles, took them into a little store. Um, at that time, I didn't even fully know what I wanted the branding to be. So we had like candles like this that had the X, but I also was like playing a lot with the Swiss cross because that was a lot of my inspiration. So I had Swiss cross candles. I think I had two with X's, mostly all Swiss cross. So I thought I was going full apothecary, right? Like very European. Um, I had a few that were blank. Um, and then all of them had like tags that I'd handwritten. I would handwrite the stickers on the top. I hand wrote wax Buffalo on every jar. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I took them into this little store and they sold out in like a week, which I know just 12 candles, but I was like, what? Okay. So I took my little money and I went home and I reinvested back into the company, bought more wax, bought some more oil, bought some more jars, did it again. And I made like 24 this next time. And that was basically how I grew the business and kind of have for the last five years. Um, the boss will tell you that I get real scared about like buying too much of anything because I don't know when you're an entrepreneur, you're a small business owner. Don't you always kind of feel like, well, someday it's all going to end, right? Or someday I'm going to make a terrible decision and buy way too many jars. And that will be the month that everyone stops buying candles. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so we kind of, we, we've grown and grown and now we actually, um, we order candle jars by the thousands, which is very exciting and very scary. And I have equal amounts of like, oh my gosh, a palette just came in. This is the coolest thing ever. And then I like have to go in my office and be like, okay, it's good. That's good. It's good that we have that many jars. This is a good thing. And so, um, yeah, so all that to say, uh, that's kind of how I started the business. We're in 80 stores across the U S um, we're in lots and lots of your States. So you can find us in all of these amazing stores when they open back up. And we're also in the whole, um, Midwest region of Whole Foods, which is very exciting too. Um, and just exciting too. And like having to learn how to be in a big box store and how they intake and how you package for them. Um, we had to learn how to print UBC codes. Uh, so that was pretty cool kind of learning all of that and all of the procedures that go, um, with a bigger store. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Well, maybe I think we should pour our candle, huh? Cause we're about to be done with this big renegade virtual market, like what a fun thing, right? How cool of renegade to put this on for everybody. And I hope that you've met so many cool makers today and um, supported them. And thank you for all the love in the comments and the kind notes. And um, just thanks for like stopping by and, and, and being a part of our little candle pour. We'll be back on tomorrow. If you want to tell your friends, um, the whole renegade crew is back on again tomorrow, Saturday, um, one to three Eastern time. So we'll be on 12 to 2. I had, to, I had to think about it for a second. 12 to 2 central. If you're central, um, we're going to be pouring more candles. I'll be pouring more candles. I, after now talking for two hours straight, I might try to talk some of the um, waxy bees into taking a, a 20 minute stint or so. <laughs> so you don't have to hear my same story over and over again, but thank you for being here and thanks for caring and thanks for caring about small makers and small businesses. And I hope you're safe and well at home. Um, I hope you're staying home and being cozy and, um, sending so many prayers and so much love out to all of you for real to you and all of your families. It's a scary time. And I'm, I'm glad that we're all in it together. Not glad that we're in a scary time together. That came out dumb, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm glad that we can come together at a time like this and love on each other. Okay. Let's pour a candle before I sign off. So eucalyptus peppermint, this is going to be my night candle. And here it goes. You always want to pour super slowly. So that is kind of the beautiful thing when you buy from like small batch hand poured candles. Um, we do take the time to make sure that they're poured really slowly so that you aren't getting those bubbles and that the oil is in there so beautifully. 
I'm going to use my little wick stick and make sure that my wick is stuck up right in the center. If you've been tuning in, you can also use pencils to hold it on either side. You just stick a pencil on each side and then, or a pen. Um, sometimes pens with like pen caps hold a little bit better. You can also use clothes pins. If you get our DIY kit, we tried to keep it really affordable to be able to make two candles and have all the stuff. So we didn't put any of the like bougie things in that you don't necessarily need after you make your candles. So those are my tips. Use a clothes pin. Um, you know, you can use like the, the pancake pitcher to melt your wax. Use your big pot on your stove. Use your pencils to hold your wick. Um, I hope you have had a fun time with us today. I've had a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping to actually like pop through now and go look at all of the cool makers that are on Renegade today. There was some really cool stuff and I'm excited to see what everybody's been doing. Um, and then stop by again on our little YouTube channel. You can subscribe. We post a new episode of distance every Sunday. Um, and we do a new batch of candles and the proceeds for each of those candles. It feels a lot like this. We create something new for a maker across the U S. Um, and then we make a batch of those and we sell them. the proceeds go to the Lincoln food bank. Um, and it's just kind of something that it's been really cool. The conversations are neat. It's neat to see like how creators are still creating, how they're staying creative, what they're doing. There's some really beautiful hearts out there that have just been like pouring their art into the community around. Our next episode coming up is actually, we're talking to artist Allie Rash and she actually, um, her kids do art for us in the background while we're talking. And then she hand painted vessels for us, um, with the most dreamy, dreamy scent. I won't give it away. Um, until the episode, but they're beautiful. And so she did a little small run of them. We'll sell them on Sunday night on distance. And then the proceeds, of course, will go to the Lincoln Food Bank. Um, we did it. It has been two hours. My little thing just went, you did it. And so um, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for making candles with me in my little kitchen. I'm going to um, I'm going to think of you all while I burn these candles in the next couple days. And again, tell your friends, we'll be back on tomorrow doing the same crazy stuff by we, I mean me, um, <laughs> we'll make some more candles. If you want me to try some like specific scents, by all means, let's try it. We can get a little crazy. It'll be fun. Um, and maybe I'll pour some different vessels and we can talk about how you wick vessels and the different way that you can like embrace different shapes and sizes, but what you need to think through when you're doing that. Um, but let me know if there's anything else you want to learn while we're on tomorrow. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, oblige. Okay. Hugs and kisses. My face is going to get real close to the camera again, and I'm going to end my stream, but thanks again. Again, we're Wax Buffalo, Pure Soy Candle Company in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Alicia Reisinger. Thanks for stopping by. Mwah. Here I come. Are you sure you want to end? I do. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.